Hello! I'm Alina Lee. I'm a level 4 sugar gnome wizard. I love the support the Discord community gives each other and their willingness to help all players. And I truly look forward to playing every day. So come join us! Hello guys, I'm Kostas Morach, 4th level human druid. Uh, dudes, uh, what is the best thing in our community? They receive everybody. They help everybody. And during these difficult times, a place where you can be accepted and play as much as we play and has a little part of our anxieties and suffering going away from us is something and a place really special. So sorry for not having like the best English of the world, but that's it. I love our Realmsmith Discord and our crew and everybody else, everybody else. Join us, it's really awesome. I'm Noggins, a level seven satyr druid of dreams. I'm Rico, a level 18 Aracocra monk of the sun. And I am Rorschach, or you can call me Rory, and I'm a level three College of Creation bard. And in a few words or less, Realmsmith is a community that really keeps me on my toes. The role play that happens within the Discord server is some of the best I've ever had the honor of partaking in, and the community truly cares about each other. And it's such a wonderful place to be. So join us. Hi everyone, I'm Darby and I play Tyel, who is a level 15 half elf ranger on the Realmsmith Discord server for Into the Mist. And one of the things that I really love about this community is that it's a community. There's so many people that genuinely care about you. There's so many different characters and stories to be told. And I love that I can honestly just escape for however long I want to into this world. Um, and so, yeah, I hope you'll join us. Hello, my name is Niall and I play Barf Battlebrain, a level 10 Dwarven Champion in the Into the Mist Realmsmith Discord. The reason I like the Discord so much is it gives me the chance to have fantastic roleplay opportunities with people from all across the globe and I've made many friends by doing so. So come and join us, it doesn't matter where you're based, there's always a home for you here. Good luck, hope to see you soon. Hello, I am Elder Sidivar Baba Negra. Level 10 Eldritch Knight in Friendly Camp Weirbear. I'm also Sid Jok Lam, Master of Fortune to the Plank King, and Blood Muzzle, Thorn in the Side of Camp Gakis. For those of you that know me in the real world, I'm John, and proud to be a member of the Smith Guardian team. But enough about me, down to why we are truly here. And that is celebrate Realmsmith and the community. No, family they have managed to grow over the last year. They truly have created a safe haven for all. It doesn't matter if you're a full-time gamer, part-time clicking math rock roller, or just new to roleplay full stop. Whatever your background, time zone, or interest, you will find like-minded individuals to adventure with and create your own tales whilst enjoying the Dungeons and Dragons experience. So the Discord platform and live streams from Realmsmith really have already helped forge so many tight friendships, a real sense of camaraderie and a place to call home. If you told me a year ago I'd be moderating streams with the likes of the amazing Neurological, Critical Bard, Matthew Lillard, even Luke Gygax himself, I'd have laughed at them. And laughed harder still if they suggested I'd be writing content for consumption across multiple time zones. But testimony to what Realmsmith have built it's now a reality. So the big thing is, what are you waiting for? Come join us and start your journey. Welcome to Dwarven Forge. This is everything you need to know about our terrain in 60 seconds. Ready? Let's go. We hand sculpt our pieces for maximum detail and artistry, infusing passion into every millimeter of our work. Everything is available beautifully hand painted so you can start playing right away or you can choose unpainted to paint everything yourself. Our pieces are completely modular, so you can use the same sets to create a new adventure every time. 
Most pieces have embedded anchor magnets that affix to our terrain trays for secure building and for revealing rooms as your players discover them. We create everything out of Dwarvenite, our top secret PVC formula that's nearly indestructible. We pack our pieces with as many features as possible, such as swappable LEDs to quickly change the look of your scene. We offer magnetic accessories to add flavor or increase the danger. A one-inch tactical grid is sculpted into our floors, hidden in dungeon flagstones, natural rocks, or sticks and plants. In addition to sculpted pieces, we make terrain trays to use as a vibrant graphic base for your build. We offer a range of environments, including dungeons, caverns, cities, castles, sewers, forests, mountains, streets, burrows, ice, and hellscape. And that's just the beginning. We have a passionate fan base who can tell you all about it. And that's everything you need to know about Dwarven Forge in 60 seconds. The games we play are the stories we create. The fortress doors swing open. Every story is unique. And the sound of war drums rises. Sometimes our stories come to us when we least expect them. We need to be ready no matter where inspiration strikes. And sometimes our stories are told over great distances. No matter where your journey leads you or how your story is told. The games we play are the stories we create. Sirenscape can help make yours epic. Sirenscape is searchable, fast, and customizable from any device with no need to pre-install any sound. Adding epic atmosphere to your game has never been easier. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 4 of Into the Mist. This is our Curse of Strahd campaign. We're going to go through some quick announcements and then we'll jump right into the action. First off, of course, as always, we want to thank Dungeons & Dragons for this incredible game that we play a week in, week out. Uh, I want to thank our first title sponsor, Hero Forge. Hero Forge has an incredible online miniature designer creator. Uh, you can also create avatars uh, for your tabletop experience. You can check them out at www.heroforge.com. Uh, all of our uh, player character miniatures uh, are done through Hero Forge and also do some of the, like, the bigger characters as well, as well as some things we might see tonight. So. That is Hero Forge. Thank you so much. The second main title sponsor is Beetle and Grimms. Uh, they create premium box experiences for your tabletop gaming, uh, your favorite tabletop games, including Dungeons and Dragons. You can check them out at www.beetleandgrimms.com. They have a lot of awesome stuff that we use, and I cannot wait to get around the table with everyone uh, when we get to go get to the next stage of uh, opening things up, so that we can actually share some of those items across the board. Also want to thank Sirenscape, our final main title sponsor. You can check them out at www.sirenscape.com slash realmsmith. When you do that, if you search for Realmsmith, you'll find all the content that we've created for them. But basically, they're an online tool for adding ambiance and sound to your games. We use it through all of our sessions. We're using it tonight, uh, and you can check them out. Uh, we announced a couple weeks ago that I will be at D3 at C. You can check them out at d3atc.com. Uh, basically, it is a D&D &D cruise um, 
myself, Omega, and a bunch of other awesome Dungeon Masters will be running games every day on the ship. Um, and you can check it out, as well as some of our cast are also joining us. Um, David has confirmed, and there is one other, if I get a thumbs up from the other one, if I can announce it, if he hasn't announced it yet because it's official, Brandon Perkins is also joining us on the ship as well, uh, and they will be jumping in to uh, one of my games, that was amazing. or many of our games. Um, but check them out, d3etsy.com. Uh, go there quickly because the cabins are going fast. Obviously, post-COVID, everybody wants to get uh, to a tropical location, So, or many people want to get to a tropical location, so check that out. Um, if you're interested in uh, joining our Discord, you can do that. There's lots of open channels and general channels for those that aren't patrons. But if you want to become a patron of Realmsmith, you can go to patreon.com slash Realmsmith and you can pledge at whatever level you decide and you can create a character based on the level that you've pledged to and join our roleplay servers. And basically what that allows you to do is become a Vistani to play within our world that interacts with our live stream. You can craft items that you can give the players and each other. You go on encounters, you search for items in Barovia. It's an awesome experience, including going on virtual quests with some of our, or led by some of our Smith Guardians, some of our cast and myself at the highest levels. Um, it's an amazing experience. Check that out at patreon.com slash realmsmith. Um, this week, actually, we have a how to play a session a seminar being run by our very own Omega Jones uh, called Mortal Kombat Player versus Character. And he's going to be talking about how uh, metagaming and the world affects your character and what you know and what you don't know. Uh, you can check that out Thursday at 5 p.m. if you are a patron. Um, and that is at the Hero of the Realm and higher. And then myself, I will be running for our Weavers. So that is our, our Tail Weavers, our World Weavers, and our Realm Weavers, those community DMs that we have. I'll be doing a session on how to DM Adventures in Trello. Uh, and basically what that is, is showing you how I use Trello, which is a task management system, to run my sessions every single week. Uh, it'll be fun. That's at Thursday at 6, so right after um, Omega's session. Joel has been hard at work. Uh, we've been asked many times over the last while to get podcast versions of our sessions. It is all up to date. So wherever podcasts are found, if you search for Realmsmith, you will find Into the Mist. Um, all the episodes are up, correct, Joel? That is correct. That is correct. So you can check them out. You can listen to them at work if you can't watch. Uh, we love having you watch, uh, but if you can't and you can listen, like to drive while you listen or whatever, check them out wherever podcasts are found. Want to thank our Smith Guardians. Uh, they are the incredible creative team and uh, helpers throughout the, the Discord scenario. I uh, want to give them a huge thanks, as well as our Realm Watchers, which are our moderators in our Discord. Want to thank Julian for producing tonight. I don't do that enough. Uh, it is a thankless behind the, the camera job. And thank you, Julian, because you're amazing. If you'd like to help our channel a little further, you can check out our merch that is in the window below the video, both on Twitch and YouTube. And then this Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I'm way ahead of you, Julian. I'm <laughs> flying through these announcements today. Thursday at 8 p.m., uh, we will have Aftermath. Uh, it is our semi-spoilerific look at this episode, as well as other things that Realm Smith does. And we will have guest Lauren Urban this week. Uh, and we will talk about having her on. Um, this will be here the last episode with us today. Um, that doesn't speak to the fate of her character or anything, I promise. But sure. uh, she uh, has been filling in for Adam, who got married and has been out doing married things. Uh, and so thank you, Lauren, and we'll talk to you on Thursday night. That'll be awesome. If you like what you see tonight, make sure that you subscribe, that you share, follow us on Twitch. And without further ado, let us venture into the mists.
So excited, man. I'm ready. All right. Apparently, Dave is excited. Last we left you folks, you had um, infiltrated the Burgomaster's Mansion. The Burgomaster's Mansion That's currently nice. is being run and protected by the new regime within Velaki, run by Lady Vokter herself. She is kind of the, the de facto stand-in mayor of the town. Um, the Order of the Feather, which, or the Keepers of the Feather, I keep saying Order of the Feather, the Keepers of the Feather, um, had asked you through Erwin Martikoff to check out the mansion because there might be information in it regarding the, um, I guess, purpose or um, uh, intent behind what Lady Vokter is doing within Velaki. She knows, and it's fairly obvious that she follows Strahd, but you don't necessarily know how or why or what she's up to. So Erwin suggested that you infiltrate the mansion and you try and find some information regarding what she's up to because the Burgomaster was onto her in some way, shape, or form. Um, you entered through a back window. You, uh, Noggins, incredibly and awesomely charmed one of the guards, allowing them to kind of ignore you at this point. Um, and Travas decided to open up a door to one of the rooms, a locked door, in fact. When you entered, I will give you the description again, and then we will go from there. Dolls. This room is full of pretty little dolls. With powder white skin and auburn hair, some of them dress beautifully, others plainly. Some of the dolls fill a long bookshelf, and others are arranged in neat rows on wall-mounted shelves. Still, others are piled atop a bed and a heavy wooden chest. What's most odd is that all of the dolls, apart from their clothing, look the same. They all look like Irina Kulyana. I'll leave it to you. is going to take one. Yep. I'm going to take one off the shelf, yep. and I'm going to find Esmeralda. Uh, and I'm going to I'm going to excitedly bring it to her. Esmeralda, Esmeralda, you wanted one of these at the store. I found you one. Yeah, I didn't really want it. I just didn't. I just wanted to know why he had it. And Esmeralda is just outside the hallway, kind of right beside you, so you just kind of turn towards her. Also, put that back. I'm, I'm, I, he, he's... Sorry, I am playing outside today, and on occasion, a truck drives by. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I, I, he's he's going to go back into the room, looking at this doll, trying to figure out why she doesn't want it, because she wanted the one in the store, and I'm going to grab a different one. And bring that one out. Okay. And and the one that you're bringing out is slightly differently dressed, I'm assuming? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about this one? Do you want this one? Why, you I don't want any dolls! Why are there so I... many dolls in that room? No. Does nobody else wonder why there are so many dolls in that room? Can I follow him in there? Just be like, what are you... What Absolutely. are you even come, doing? Come and choose your own doll, then. I don't understand women. I don't want any dolls. I'm going to be at the uh, uh, the corner, I mean, where I am in the hallway. Yep. And I say, um, can we focus, please? It's Travas we're talking about. <laughs> and you do remember, Esmeralda, that, um, that Blinsky did say that it was Isaac that had been collecting and getting these dolls commissioned. Um, Are these... Go ahead, Jay, sorry. No, 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 go ahead. Them. Yeah, that's it. Basically, so you know this is his room. Or at least where he keeps his dolls. It, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's not a it's not a bed. Is it a bedroom? It or is it's a bedroom. Just like... There is a bed. Oh, and there is. are dolls p piled on the bed as well. Oh. Why is weird. Isaac collecting dolls? Not that there's anything wrong with that, but they all seem to be Irina dolls. That's what I'm concerned about. Again, I'll say, uh, Esmeralda, um, you see a long bookshelf full of dolls, and others are arranged in neat rolls and, and wall-mounted shelves. Still others are piled atop a bed and a heavy wooden chest. So it's definitely a bedroom. Uh, Mirio was back towards the back of the, the hall, I think, next to one of the other doors and hearing yep. that this room is full of dolls and agreeing that we're focused on a very specific specific mission um is are any of the other doors in this hallway unlocked i would like to try other doors and if if not i would like to start poking into other places okay so the door 
a right here to your right um, is the one that's right across the door, uh, right across the hall from the room that they are in. Um, that room appears to be unlocked. Uh, as you kind of, you, you look at it, and, and there's very clearly not a keyhole in that room. Okay. I'd, I'd like to take a second and listen at the door to see if there's any movement or sounds of sleeping or something inside, and then very quietly open and take a look on in. Okay. Uh, as you kind of, uh, give me a stealth check first. Sure. That makes sense. Oh, 16. Okay. Uh, with a 16, as you step into that room, um, you notice floor-to-ceiling shelves line every wall of this windowless room. And the number of books contained here is nothing short of astounding. A brass oil lamp sits atop a large desk in the center of the room. The chair behind the desk is comfortably padded and has the symbol of a roaring bear stitched into its back cushion. That is what you currently see right now. Um, and there are bookshelves. I, I didn't put them in there because they take up too much space, but there are bookshelves lining the entire room. Okay. Is there anybody near me at the moment? As the only I... person is Esmeralda, who's about eight feet just behind you in the other room. You're currently in this room. This is you here. That is Esmeralda right there. And okay. Travis. I'm going to back out of this room really, really quick and move over to Esmeralda and Travas. Okay. I found an office. Oh, some dolls. I mean, if you want to take a doll, that's, I, I mean, we're going to be stealing from this place. If you're really that interested in a doll, take a doll. But I found an actual office and I will try to usher them into the other room. <laughs> Uh, Travas is going to look for the best looking doll. Do they have like a Blinsky label on them? Yes, all of them. Will you leave the dolls oh alone? My. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I, she said I could take one. I'm going to just take one. I'm, I'm going to take you, one. Fine. Spend all night in the room for all I care. And I'd leave weird. <laughs> Travas to, you okay. know. Okay, so you Travas stay in the room, Travas. Uh, you go into the other room. Um, at this point, Sterling and Falfer, you guys are kind of in the back room still. You're still yep. in, in what you imagine is Victor's room. Um, what do you do? Um, I would be in the hallway. I, I probably would have moved to the hallway just to make sure I'm there in case anything breaks out. Okay. Uh, and if I see people going into the office, I'll follow. Okay. So, yeah, as you step into the hallway, you see Esmeralda kind of dip into the, off into the uh, office slash library. Um, sure. And you follow in behind. And Alfred. is there a... Is there a room behind us, Jay, like like in the opposite direction at the end of the hall? No. So the hallway ends over here, yep. just in a dead end, and there is an, a, an opening to that long hallway that Noggins is currently looking down that hall. And only the three entries that we've all kind of have been looked into so far. Yes, there's three doors in this hallway. They've all been looked okay. into. Uh, Noggins, the guard, kind of starts to saunter back in your direction, is halfway kind of down your way. And Noggins, mm -hmm. you can see that there's another hallway over here, down the hallway further, and then there's another open area this way. I will okay. slip into the, the doll room real quick. Okay. Step into the doll room. And, and you watch as Travas kind of like is looking out of the dolls and like like a kid in a candy shop, in a toy shop, I should say. Okay. I'm going to uh, I'm going to wait until Travas is uh, satisfied with the selection of doll that he will take, okay. and then uh, I will myself grab one or two of the dolls and put them in my bag. Okay. Uh, are you looking for anything specific when it comes to these dolls? I mean, they're all different shapes and uh, not all different. Sorry, they're all the same except they're d dressed differently. Some of the dolls are in like nicer clothing. Some of them are a bit more raggedy, kind of everyday clothing. But they all have that red hair and are clearly Irina. Okay, so I'm going to pick the one that seems the most like the Irina that we did. We wait, we met her, right? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, you yeah, you yeah. you Boss protected her, and then she eventually went back to. Yes. Yeah. So the one that looks the most like uh, how I remember her. Okay. All right. And you see one that was kind of in, in a bit of a... Uh, actually, the one that you see, um, she was dressed in 
armor, and she was wearing armor a lot when you saw her, kind of with like a red tunic under it, um, kind of like a, a, a half plate sort of armor. And you grab that one off the, off, and it looks like the most kind of maybe expensive because it's got that like metal plating on it. Awesome. As you grab I'll it. I'll take that one. Um, can Travos and Falfer give me a perception check, please? Hmm. Yes. Uh, crap. So, 17. Since becoming a hex blood, my natural ones, do they get wiped out? As in, do I re roll like I was a halfling before? No. <laughs> nice try, though. <laughs> ah! Okay, so. Uh, nice try. I was trying that so hard. It's an eight, <laughs> yeah. but a natural one. Yeah, no, it was good try. Um, yeah, no, uh, you don't. So you start to look around, and again, uh, nothing, you don't notice anything. Sorry, what was your role, Joel? One. One. As a natural, natural one. one. Yeah. Uh, you're pretty impressed with the doll collection. Apart from that, there isn't much else. In fact, I would say that you're distracted by the amount of dolls in this room. Um, so much so that nothing else really matters to you at the moment. Um, okay. Travas, um... You uh, you have kind of a couple dolls in your hand, and and you look you're looking up at the rest. Um, what is your armor class? Uh, <laughs> it's 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 a weird question. Yeah. It's seventeen. A, okay. Uh, it's can, I get, can I get everyone else to take your earphones out, please? Wait, including no, no, me don't or, leave me. or me don't in the room me. as well? Just 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 I want just David on. Okay. Okay. You as well, Joel. Uh, and sorry, what was your armor class? 17? 17. I'm going to make crazy faces to mess with that. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're horrible. <laughs> All right. Um, you feel a prick on your finger. Like a, like, like you get like a little, like a, like a thorn or a needle or something. And you, you kind of instinctively drop the doll and it kind of hits the floor and it rolls a bit. And you look at your finger, and you notice that there is a little kind of prick of blood coming from it. Uh, I need you to take six points of, um, sorry, one point of piercing damage from that, and then six points of necrotic damage. And I'd like to, you to give me a charisma saving throw, please. Yeah, I'm just checking on my. Uh, I feel like I have an advantage on charisma saving throws. No, I don't. Cool. Uh, it's going to be a 16. Okay. All right. Um, you start to feel a little kind of queasy, um, and the room spins a little bit, but then it leaves, and you feel okay. Uh, okay. Um, uh, I, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna pick up the doll, I guess, by the clothing and try to examine, like, what the heck happened. Okay, so as you go down to pick up the doll, your other hand, you feel another prick on your finger. Oh, good. Give me another charisma saving throw. <sighs> Not good. It's a five. Okay. Uh, you take um, you take another f uh, one piercing damage, and four necrotic. And the the room starts to spin, but this time it stays, and you feel a little slower than you did. Uh, your speed is currently reduced by ten feet. And you need to subtract one point from any rolled ability check or attack rolls. You're 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 subtracting one oh from those. Oh my gosh! Okay. Okay. Do I have an, an understanding of what's happened to me? I mean, I felt the prick. Yeah. And then I'm I feel bad. So. <laughs> yeah. With your perception, you imagine it came from the doll because you were holding the dolls. But yeah. when you look down, give me a perception check. Oh. Uh, it's it's a ten. The dolls just look normal. Like you don't even see anything really weird about them. 
can can I can I pick them up by the by the clothing and like shake them and try to see like what happened? Yeah. At this point, I'll get everybody to get their ears back in. Our can our. Camera was camera here crazy. Is, oh, yeah, no. the is lightning. Tra is Travas still alive? If you do that again, I'm coming up to Canada. <laughs> 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 All right. So, um, Falfer, you watch as, um, and you're kind of looking around at things, and then you watch as Travasa drops one of the dolls and goes, ah, like this, and then he goes to pick it up again, and then he, ah, to, the, to his left hand. Oh, um, wait. Is he holding two dolls? He was, and now both dolls are on the ground, and he's kind of going down to kind of pick it up by the clothing. I'll say, no, do not touch it. And I drop the one I'm holding as well. Okay. Something something pricked me on my hands. It may be coming out of one of the wires uh, there. We have to be careful because what, uh, what, what is wrong? Like, uh, obviously, we if if you drop them, do you, are you bleeding? What is... I'm, I'll show him my fingers. I'm not feeling very good. I, and does he I have blood on his fingers? Yes. Mm. Uh, okay. Can I? Can we hear what's happening in this room? Um, I would say uh, Sterling, you'd be the closest. So if you can give me a um, perception check. I have a high passive too. This is mainly why I'm asking. Like, do I hear anything that's happening past this? Or if not, that's fine. You I'm hear, you hear, sure. you, I would say that you hear Falfer say, wait, stop, drop it, drop it. From where you are. Okay, but that unfortunately it sounds like something Falfer would say, so okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to take my, my, my dagger and my sword and try to like peel away the clothing to see if something mechanical jabbed me. I'll, I'll help with that. So, yeah. So, we'll investigate the dolls. I'm assuming he's been, at, like, pricked by some, some mechanism inside as well. Yeah. So, um, so, I will help him dissect the dolls. Okay. Investigation check. Okay. And are you investigating just the ones that you guys were holding? What the? <laughs> one. Natural one. I hate hex bloods. Uh... Can we go back? <laughs> <laughs> I got a 12. <laughs> Okay. I, uh. um, with a 12. Um, okay. Um, Falfer. Um, what's your armor class? 14. Okay. You also 16, feel sorry. a prick on your hand. When you're, as, you're, as you're investigating it, the, the doll drops to the ground, and you look at your finger, and there's a little blood kind of drip that that ah. comes to the surface. I don't understand. I just told you I got picked in two hands and you go and grab it. Can you no, give me I, no. Can you give me a charisma saving throw please? And yes. you take uh, 1 point of piercing damage and 4 points of necrotic. <sighs> five told. Okay. Um and a charisma saving throw you said. Yeah. Uh Okay. So that's I'm rolling terribly tonight. So that's a 5. Okay. Which is, by the way, another natural one plus four. Okay. So it's a natural one again. Three in a row, folks. Okay. Three in a row. All right. So um, you feel slow. Um, as though you're not moving quite as quickly as you typically would. Okay. And you need to remove. You need to subtract four from all ability checks and <gasps> attacks. Huh. <gasps> what? Ooh. Moving forward until uh, I say otherwise. You're also shocked. I, I've got the same thing. I'd like to believe you'd be shocked to know that as well. We're not. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Ah. Uh, shoot. Uh, what? I I turn to I I turn to uh, Travas and I go. Wait. I'm feeling, feeling very odd. We, we need to go ask for help. And I stumble out into the hall, and I I point to my finger. Yeah. Uh, I, I basically bring attention to my finger to Sterling and go like, we've both been attacked by dolls. Now that... And... Uh, good. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Finish up. 
That's it. Okay. So you you turn to do that. Let's go back to the other room and to Noggins because some time has passed here. Um, what do Esmeralda, Sterling, and uh, Muriel want to do in the library? Well, do we hear Falfer? Um, I would say that you do some things first. Get you get a chance to have an action. Oh, of course. Or so, course, and yeah. then okay. I'll, oh yeah, you do. But I'll give you some time because it was some time passed while they were searching and doing whatever they were doing. Uh, let's tear this place apart. I'm just Esmeralda check. will um, investigate, just turning over everything. Okay, Muriel. I'm kind of doing the same thing, which is why I wanted some people here with me, although I'm going to focus on the desk. Okay, so you're going to focus on the desk. Uh, Esmeralda, as Muriel's focusing on the desk, what do you want to focus on? Uh, did you see there are bookshelves? Yeah, there are bookshelves lining all the walls, and, and the amount of books in here are astounding. I'm just, tur like, turning random, like, picking... You know how, like, if you're just pulling out halfway, like, books? Yep. I'm looking for anything in between books, okay. anything that moves as a result of moving books. Right. I'm right. looking like for any, like anything. Right. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, I, so you guys give me an investigation check. Sterling, what are you up to? Uh, where else is there to, to look after these two locations? Um, as you look through, the only two things in this room are the, the vast amount of bookshelves and the desk. But there's the bookshelves go all across the side, the, the west wall, and across the north and south area. So you can help um, yeah. investigate the I'll bookshelves if you like. I'll start at the other end of the bookshelves. Okay. Kind of assuming we'll just meet in the middle. Okay. Investigation check for you. All right. What did you get, Muriel? I got a 14 on my investigation. I would say um, I'd start with just looking at the desk and then I'm going to be really cautious about opening up doors and things yep. because I think she assumes a desk would be a place that would be locked, trapped, something like that. Okay. Um, as you look and, and kind of investigate the desk, uh, you, don't you don't think it's trapped. You're pretty confident it's not. Okay. Anything on the surface? Um, on the surface, there are some blank sheets of paper and a, a, a quill pen and a jar of ink um, that you can see right now kind of on the surface of it. Okay, and um, if I take a second to look at the blank sheets of paper, do, do they look like anyone had written on the top sheet and I could possibly see some bleed through writing mm. or something like that? You know, like mm -hmm. if you're writing on yeah. a notebook and the page is underneath? Yeah, yeah. Um, not that, not, it doesn't seem so. Okay. That you can tell with your 14. Okay, how many desk drawers are there? Uh, there, are there is um, one, like, thin one along the, the, the top, and then two larger ones kind of down the right. Okay, I'll start with the thin one on the top. Okay. Uh, I'll as, slowly pull it yeah. out. Since I, I don't think there's a trap, I'll be slow just to continue to be quiet, even sure. though there's ransacking and dull things happening. Sure, sure. Um, as you do it quietly, you, you open up the long, thin drawer, and you see that there's just extra quills, ink, and paper in that first top drawer. Okay. Uh, go for the one of the other big doors. Okay. I'll, I'll just, uh, for the sake of brevity, we'll say that as you look through the other large doors, no traps, nothing like that. You manage to do it quite quietly, um, and you find thick books, which seem to be tax records. And as you kind of leaf through the books um the dates back um to the times of the baron's father grandfather and even great grandfather so those two drawers are just full of like ledgers and tax books um that have a lot of information financial information leading all the way back generations three generations in fact it, is there anything recent that would deal with um i've forgotten her name the person lady lady Vopter? Vopter. yeah um I'm going to say with your 14, I'm going to say that um, you it's a lot. It's scrawled, and so it's a little overwhelming, the amount of information. At your first kind of glance through, you don't see anything with her name on it, but you do notice that the most recent date is like three days ago, so just before the Burgomaster was <clears throat> slain. Okay. I'm going to take that book, shove it in a pack. Okay. All right. Uh, Esmeralda, uh, investigation check. Sorry, uh, Muriel, go ahead. I apologize. That was it. I was just going to whisper to the others. Okay. Not much here. Okay. Esmeralda? 22. Okay. With a 22, um, you start pulling books out, and you're not finding anything um, in between them 
that you can find. No secret doors, nothing that opens like a, which you hoped might happen. Um, but. Or if anything that fell out of a book. Yeah, yeah. Um, other than like bookmarks and things kind of holding places, it doesn't seem like a lot is being kept in the books. Um, but you find a, a, there's a vast range of books, a vast range. And kind of, you know, the first one you sort of kind of take a look at, it's, it's a heretical text. Um, which talks about uh, cults and information and that kind of back history uh, of heresy. Um, I'm stealing that for okay. sure. All right. And there's all kinds of books. You can you can kind of like pull a couple out if you want to keep them. Well, we're specifically looking for information to see if she, proof that she's aligned with Strahd. Mm -hmm. So would there be anything incriminating? Yeah. In so. Aspect? I'll I'll, uh, I'll just tell you and, and Sterling, as you guys kind of look through, it appears that these are all literally just inf informational books. You don't find, uh, actually, Sterling, can you give me an, uh, your investigation check just to find out what exactly? Oh, that was a nat 20. Very nice. Hey. Nat 20 oh. brought to you by Mithril Armory. Um, yeah, so with the nat 20, you're convinced, Sterling, and after talking to Esmeralda, uh, you guys are convinced that it, these are just informational books. Uh, there's fictional books. A lot of it is historical texts. There's some books of exotic uh, recipes and heraldry and military, military strategy. There's a guide to fine wines. Like It's literally just a library of information and books that the Burgomaster and his family have collected over the years and found interesting. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm going to yoink that heretical text okay. for later. Okay. Um, I'm going to say there's a couple that probably pique your interest, Esmeralda. Uh, there's also mm -hmm. one, it's a bestiary of strange beasts, which kind of piques your interest. Okay. I'll um, take that. So those two. Um, Sterling, you pick out a couple that you that might be interest to you. Uh, an epic. No there's like an epic novel. You can tell it's like this, this vast and remembering kind of child Sterling. Um, brings back some memories of the books that you used to read as, a, read as a kid as that consciousness kind of comes to the to the surface. Uh, there's also a book of military strategy, which you might be interested in. Um, and that kind of speaks to other parts of your psyche, as well as a po poetry anthology as well, which reminds you of your father. Yes, all very tempting. Um, I, I think I'll, I'll decide to leave them just as tempting as it is, just because I, I feel wrong about stealing in this situation. Okay. So. All right. Uh, Noggins, let's go back to you. Um, you hear a commotion uh, down in the room with the dolls. You also hear them kind of tossing the library um, as the guard kind of passes you and continues down to the open area on the left. How long does that charm last, you said? An hour. Yeah, so we've got lots of time left. Yep. You guys have pre pretty but, much been like five five minutes at this point. Yeah, but he's also like, let's keep going, because in an hour yeah. they're going to know that I did a thing and it's yeah. not going to be good. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so right now, uh, at least at the beginning, I'm guess I'm listening out. I'm trying to like push the sounds of my companions out of my ear, ear follicle things. Yeah. Uh, and I'm just trying to listen out to see if there's any sounds coming from certain areas, what seems empty, what doesn't seem empty, just so we know where to go next. Yeah. Uh, we don't know if we need to go downstairs yet, but right now, if we could stay upstairs and get these places, then that's better. Yeah. So that's where I'm at right now. Please. Of course. Let's use digital dice, or are they going to hate me today? And I'm, I'm still, I still have passed without a trace up which is an hour as well, so I won't use Guidance, okay. Oh. That's right, you guys still have Pass Without a Trace, so even though you're tossing Ooh. this library, everything's Ooh, happening 27. Very, very okay, 27? Mm-hmm. Woo! Mm -hmm. Ooh. Um, all right, uh, with a 27, as you listen very carefully, you hear the footsteps of the guard passing you. You also hear a set of footprints downstairs, one floor below you. Um, and then you also hear a creak in the floor above you. Okay. And you hear a very familiar sound above you. You hear... Mmm. Uh, cool. 
Um, I note those things uh, for sure because that's not creepy. Um, and then I turn around and just say, um, and, and, is there anything that we can, is there anything useful or should we keep going? Also, why are you bleeding? Bleeding? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll come out to, to, yeah. to Noggins. Can you believe this bullstrad? It zapped me twice in both hands. Adult, adult did that. Yeah. Oh. So, you, I am like feigning, like the idea that I care. Um. Well, maybe we shouldn't pick up things that we don't know in places that we've never seen before. Now you listen. You listen here. You. You, you think you, I'm telling you this was not done uh, with any kind of carelessness. Um, I'm assuming that given that my constitution is incredibly low, that I'm having more difficulty dealing with this than Travis is. Sure. If you want to role play um, that, yeah. Yeah, sure. And um, so, uh, so I'll just, uh, I'll start tumbling towards the door. And uh, and trying to hold on to Noggin's shoulders, like, uh, um, <laughs> do you mind carrying me for a little bit? Um, I'm... sorry, that was way more <laughs> impactful than I expected it to be. <laughs> right. Noggin's is actually holding on to a piano. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Now, now again, Falfer, you, you you feel slower, so you're only a third slower. So okay. you're, you're feeling the effects, but it's not like you're poisoned or anything like that. You're just, you're feeling slower. Okay. Am I acting slow? Is it just the feeling that's slower? Or am I actually acting no, more slowly? You, you, you're feeling, like you're moving slower than you expected. Almost like you have a flu and, you know, you're not, oh, you're, okay. you're, you're, your reactions aren't quite as fast. And again, you, okay. negative four. So you are feeling it more than Travas is, but you have yep. a negative four to ability check. So and 30% less movement. So that's kind of a, okay. a good, yeah. Okay, so I, I contracted COVID or something and this is the beginning of it. Um, uh, can I tell what's going on with them? Uh, give me a medicine check. Cause y'all look weird. Hmm. That's uh, normal. Though. Ooh, 22. Okay, with the 22, you kind of place your in the back of your hand to their heads and they don't feel mm. feverish. Yeah. You don't get the sense that they're poisoned or anything like, like smack that. Smack on accident. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I sneak attack him. <laughs> <laughs> I won't heal you. Cool. Um, oh, I don't, they don't. They don't seem poisoned. They don't seem. They don't seem uh, ill. Brief. But they're obviously not okay. Hmm. Is there something? If they don't seem physically, if they seem physically fine, but they aren't fine. Is there something more magical going on? Arcana check. I don't know why. Why, why did I even set that up for myself? I, I don't know why I did that. Um, sure. Yeah, that's an eight. Okay. Um, you're not sure, but it's unexplained. It's unexplainable. So something has clearly happened. They've been pricked. You don't get the sense that they're sick. Uh, their body isn't uh, reacting to any sort of toxin or poison. Mm -hmm. but something is amiss. If I can get everyone to take your earphones out other than Travas and Falfer, please. Here we go again. I told you I'm coming to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Travas and Falfer, mm. everything goes dark for the two of you. But... What I'm about to tell you, I need you to role play to a T. The okay. doll that you had that had pricked you and cursed you has now taken over your body. Its consciousness is now in your bodies. And obviously this consciousness, it has, uh, I'll explain what it does to your character and then you, I want you guys to play it as though you are that creature and not Falfer and Travas. Uh, and not let out. The idea is, is that they're trying to not let everybody know that you are who you are. Okay? okay. Um, 
So they're trying to role play our characters. Yeah, they're trying to kind of blend into the party still. Yep. Um, okay, so it's going to be a little weird, and they're sense. not going to know information that you guys would know necessarily. But okay. let me explain. Um, it gains control of your body and your co and uh, um, it retains its intelligence, wisdom, and charisma scores. So your new intelligence score is uh, eight. Your new wisdom score is fourteen, and your new charisma score is is is, four, is fourteen as well. Okay. Okay. Um, and it otherwise uses your body statistics, but doesn't gain access to your knowledge, class features, or proficiencies. Hmm. So any feature or trait no longer still exists. Like, like the, you, you don't have access to that. Yeah, like we're right. not aware that that's there, so we can't use it. Right, right. And uh, for... so, so you're probably, I would imagine this creature would control you and not say much and not act weird, just kind of try and blend in and do the thing. Okay? Okay, right. one, one so, last question yeah. though before yeah. we go. <laughs> yeah. Do I, do I know that Dave has, or that Travas is like this and does Travas's uh, kind of construct know that I'm like this? As soon as this happens, you both look at each other, you lock eyes and you nod. You absolutely know that uh, okay do we have do we have like an like an objective or some role play notes like yeah what? yeah like i said so you're trying to infiltrate the party for now yeah and you're trying to not make it obvious that you are not who you are so mm. doing whatever you can not to bring attention to yourself and the fact that now you are another consciousness and these creatures are crafty okay. they're not incredibly smart but they're very wise are we wise. trying to find out information about them? Are we just trying to follow the the you're you're trying to follow the party around, and you're enjoying the freedom of your new body? Okay. Mm. Would we know anything about the party? What would we know about the party? Nothing. And who they only are? Only what you've seen. Only the names that have been spoken in this room. Okay. So effectively, we've all been the trapped noggins. in this room, and now we've got some freedom, and we're going to be careful not to lose that freedom. Yeah. Effectively. Okay. Yeah. Um. You also want to pick up the doll that pricked you and keep it safe. Hmm. Okay, so I got to pick up both of those little pricks. Yeah. You also know okay. that the consciousness of your characters has been transferred to that doll. And an hour <sighs> from now, th that consciousness will come back to consciousness. Whoa, 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 okay. Wait, wait, in, your, in the doll or in, back your in the... Your character is currently unconscious within yeah. the doll. In an hour, that character becomes conscious. So in the doll, yeah, that character becomes yeah. conscious. You have traded oh, forever. Holy crap. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Jay. Yeah. Um, you also know that the way that this has happened is you curse people by pricking them with the needle the each doll has a needle um just like a sewing needle hmm. and the swap is undone if that needle is used again to poke your body so you want you don't want that to happen you want to stay in this body as long as you can and you want to keep your uh, the other character locked into this doll as long as possible okay okay so our intent is not to get pricked again by the doll but right. but keep the doll safe right yep okay is that okay. pretty, cl pretty clear? Pretty clear. If you have questions, yeah. um, you can uh, text me in uh, or, or send me messages in the Zoom chat. That's okay. that's. This is terrible, Jay. But thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. Everybody's back. Can everybody hear me? We all good. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> yeah. hear me? Okay. Yeah. All right. Back to you, Noggins. Um, as mentioned, you check. You know that you don't feel. You feel something's off, but you're not quite sure what it is. It's unexplained. You don't know if it's magical or not, but it's obviously not necessarily physical. It's not like they're sick. Um, in the other room, you guys kind of finish searching the room fairly uh, sufficiently. Uh, you found what you found. What do you all do? 
Real quick, is there any other exit to this room or is it just the one? There is no other exit to that room. Okay. I will hold up the tax book I found. Okay. Sorry. This is it. This is all I got. I lied earlier. Down the hallway, there is one more door at the back of the hallway. We can't see it because our camera, for some reason right now, is not working. Uh, but at the back mm -hmm. of the hall, at the end of the hall, there was another door. I apologize. I, all I found was tax books. And also, I just remembered there's another door down the hall. Do you want to go check that out? Yeah, let's go check out the other room. All I found was this uh, occult book and something about the beasts, which, you know, beach reads or whatever. Very <laughs> Vacation read books. Esmeralda, um, come with me. I want, to, I want you to see something. Is there a doll that's dressed like Esmeralda's kind of dressed? Not really. With like the red, with like a red ribbon or anything. Sure, you find one that's wearing red clothing, but that's probably the closest. Are yeah, I gotta point it out to her. Look, this one is kind of like you. I think you should take this one. It it looks like you. I don't uh, want any dolls. We're trying to find out if Lady Wagner is aligned with Straw. This is not helping us. But I, I think that you you would like it if you had this one. I don't want a doll. I didn't want a doll five minutes ago. I don't want a doll now. Fine, maybe on our way out Plus, we can have it. we bought dolls of each other. I have one that looks like me. That's true. The one that is made, uh, the one that you have is uh, probably enough. Uh, but oh. if you want another one. No, focus. Okay. <laughs> and I'll just vote um, for the other room. Okay. Uh, and if anybody's still standing out there, uh, maybe Sterling or Amiri or somebody. Um, I would just say um, there are footsteps um, from below, um, and uh, there's also something upstairs that we probably uh, need to see, um, be, or because I, I remember it from when I was divining. Thank you. Um, which, also, which, I don't know what's wrong with um, them. I don't know why they got hurt. It doesn't seem like they're poisoned, though. So maybe it was just like a bad stitch or something. Maybe it's like a splinter. I don't know. Yes, a bad. It's bad a splinter. Uh, I think they they might have left one of the needles in the in the in the thing, but it is it's okay now. I've put it in my bag. It's safe. It's Sam, I will uh, make sure. We investigate them later. I will. Uh, I'll then. I'll just grab a few more dolls from the from the side, Jay, and I'll put them on, in my bag just that that we can have them for later for investigation. Do, okay. do I see him grabbing the dolls as I'm leaving to go to the other room? Yeah, give me a perception check on that. Okay. Well, you know what? I'd say yes because you didn't try to hide that, right, Falfer? You were just no pulling dolls, yeah. Um, but do do still give me a perception check, Miriam? Uh, fifteen. I'm with not rolling fifth, well. With a 15, as you pull some of the dolls off, you see that there is a brown beaten leather journal that was kind of tucked behind the dolls that he has now pulled into his bag. Okay. On the shelf. I will stop. I'm not going to go into the room with the creepy dolls because I still want to okay. go down the hall. Yeah. Uh, but I will point out the journal. I'll look over at Esmeralda and say, do you see that right there? It was behind the dolls. What is it? And I don't know. I don't know. Um, and then just because I have a passive insight of 20, do I believe these two? Uh, that's a great question. Um, and, and believe them in what way? What do you what, what are you? Specifically, there was the moment in where like, oh, yeah, we just got you know, like a stitch hit us and it's not that important. But wait, let me grab some more dolls like that's. That was enough that I think Muriel would have stopped and paid attention. Like, yeah. Does anything seem off? Yeah, with... I, I'd say it's it it was it seems somewhat abrupt, but um, they seem like themselves are talking like themselves, but something's different in in the Having... kind of order of things. Yeah. Okay. Having Muriel point out to me that there was something behind the the shelves. I'm going to mage hand knock all those dolls off the shelves to see what's left. Okay. And as you as you do, there doesn't seem to be anything else on the shelves. All the dolls kind of hit the Except ground. Except you said that there was the book? Uh, the book is still on there, yeah. 
Yeah. Can I mage hand that book? Sure. You mage hand over? it and you bring it out to you outside the room? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. When right. she knocks the, the dolls off the shelf, I'm going to take the ones that are on the on the bed. Like, there's ones on the bed yep. and stuff, right, too? I'm going to take them and just, like, scoop them really hard, like, throwing them into the hallway, just, yep. like, throwing them out of there and then, like, ruffling the, the bed to see what's what's under the sheets and that sort of thing. Okay. All right. So you're, you're searching the, the bed. So give me an investigation check for that. Uh, Esmeralda, the book is pulled by your mage hand into your hand. Go ahead. What's your investigation check? Eleven. Okay. Um, a thorough search of the of the bed um, includes a few empty wine bottles under the bed. The label on each bears the winery's name, Wizard of Wines, and uh, the label of Purple Grape Mash Number Three, actually, which happens to be this label that I got from Beetle and Graham. Um, but you find some empty bottles under there, uh, but nothing else under the bed. Uh Muriel, as all the dolls are getting knocked off everywhere, is going to be is going to say, "Can we be a, a little bit more quiet?" And then is going to continue back down the hall towards that other door that we haven't examined yet. Okay, um, I'll get back to you in a second, Esmeralda. Uh, Muriel, as you get to that door, you do notice that there is a keyhole in that door. Okay, can I give it a thorough examination to see yep. if it is locked and or trapped? Yep. Investigation check. Not my strong suit, but let's see. Oh, it's a natural one for two. I'm um, so distracted by the fact that all these dolls are just yep. everywhere, and now now my friends are distracted by the dolls, and I'm distracted. It's the dolls are the worst. Yep. Um, you are incredibly convinced that it is not trapped. Okay. Uh, is it locked? Yep. I'll take a second and listen at the door. Do I hear anybody inside? You do not. Okay. I will pull out my thieves' tools. Okay. And try to unlock this door. Yep. Um, and that's a dex check plus proficiency, right? That is right. Tools proficiency. Okay. Ugh. That's a nine. Wow. Um, even <laughs> still, it's a fairly... I mean, you take your time. You're not in any sort of rush. So it takes you a little bit of time, but it's a fairly simple lock. Um, almost like just like a, 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 a normal um, residential lock. And it unlocks... You open up the door um, as you kind of look carefully inside before you open it too much. And you see chained to the back wall are iron shackles. Um, it's a small chamber. Um, it's only kind of 10 by 10. And the shackles kind of lie in a dried pool of blood. As if somebody had been kept in here. I'm not going to enter the room just yet, but I'm going to take a big whiff. How long ago from the smell do I think someone was in here? Mm. Uh, I'm going to give me a nature uh, medicine check. Okay. To try and... That's another natural one. Wow. It's yeah, just, you're not sure. That's, nope, that's You're kind five. of off-put by the whole scene. <gasps> yeah. I'm first dolls, and now it now it sell. I will... I'm still not going to enter the door or yeah. enter this room, but I'll look down the hall at whoever I can see. Yep, Sterling is down the hall. Yeah. yeah, I'll look, I'll make eye contact with Sterling and I'll point to the door and then quietly mouth, there's a cell in here. Someone was being kept prisoner. Okay, so I'll, I'll approach her. Okay. As I'll, you approach, I'll you look open in. Open the door to kind of show. Oh. I wonder who that was. Do you think this was under previous management or current i have no idea i can't i can't tell and while i want to investigate more i don't know if that would tell us anything about what we're here to find i just wanted someone else to see this perception check sterling okay twenty one okay with a twenty one um the blood seems like it is, I mean, you've seen dried blood, you've seen lots of dried blood. Uh, you imagine this is, somebody had been kept here probably about three days to a week ago, somewhere in that time frame. Does that line up with the assassination? Around that time. This could be related to the assassination. Uh, Timeline-wise, I would say this blood is three days to a week old. 
back so to definitely, Esmeralda real quick. Sorry, Mural, go ahead. So definitely the previous occupants. Most likely. Back to Esmeralda. So, um, the notebook is Isaac's, you can tell. Um, amidst the scrawl notes, you find the following information. Uh, get your notepad ready. There has yet been no sign of the butler and lady-in-waiting. He fears the worst. He has seen a group of four individuals. You know what? I can paste this for you <laughs> rather than you. Okay, great. Have you it down? It's a lot. He has seen a group of four individuals entering the Vokter house through the cellar almost on a nightly basis. Some leave later in the evening, but others don't leave until the morning. L lists the inhabitants of the Vokter house. So Lady Fiona Vokter, her two sons, Nikolai and Carl. You remember meeting them actually in the Blue Water Inn. Uh, the cook, David. The two maids, Madalena and Amalthea, and a valet named Halik. He also mentions that they would probably be the best source of information on Lady Fiona's plot, but they would never speak to Isaac because of his reputation and allegiance to the Burgomaster. Um, he says, after following the staff, they all live in the mansion, but the maids tend to head into the market together each morning for the fresh produce. Um, the cook is known to visit a home, uh, sorry, a modest house on the east side of town on a regular basis, and the valet doesn't leave the mansion much, but is known to grab a drink at the Blue Water Inn from time to time. I am going to po paste all of that information and send it to you. Okay. And I will send it to you in the Zoom chat. Hey, Jason, who yeah. is who is by the door nearest um, us, me and Travas? I was of it. I was. I'm like in between the door and the, uh, the um, where the hallway opens up. Still, yeah. Okay. So nearest to the door right now, uh, they're down at the end. Um, Esmeralda is the is is right outside the door with the book, and okay. Noggins is ten feet up the hallway a little bit. So Noggins is here. Oh. Esmeralda's here. You and Travolta. I want to come in just a little bit when they came out with the blood and stuff. That's sure. why. Yeah. That's, oh yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna say you guys are kind of both in the doorway. Okay, so actually, you were in the room. Noggins, did you go in the room to check them? I did not go in there, but I thought they came out. Yeah, okay. Yep. We'll say that they're by the, well, Travasso's over by the, by the bed, Falfer's over by the door. We'll see. Sounds good. Okay. I would say this place is already turned upside down. I'm just going to take the book. Okay. Okay. I will, I'll follow Esmeralda or get near her and, and pull out one of the three dolls that I just grabbed from the room and say, just as a, just like tug on her, uh, on her kind of sleeve a little bit and just go, hey, I, I think, I think something is very, something is very interesting about this one. I'm not sure what it is, but I think, I think we need to investigate further. Something is very, very interesting about this one. And I pull out the doll and, and I'll, I'll go to Esmeralda and I say, I say, Look carefully at, at the back, and I'll, I'll hand it over to her. We don't have time for this. No, it's, it's, it's seriously, there is something very strange about this. This is I think do Sorry. I get Do I get creeped out at this point by a suspicious insight check two? from you, Esmeralda, and from Noggins? Yeah, because this is this is the second time that yeah stuff like this is happening, and they, yeah, uh, of course you don't. Twelve, okay. seventeen. Okay, um, with the twelve noggins, uh, you know that they've that their disposition has changed, but you're not sure if it's because of the um, of the moment. So maybe the prick kind of made them a little nauseous or whatever. But now they've moved past it. Um, so you don't really get anything. Esmeralda, you're a little bit more creeped out. Um, you definitely sense that there's a little bit of something going on. Um, I'm going to allow Falfer to make a check, and it'll be either persuasion, deception, whatever you say that it is that you're doing, and okay. then that will be against Esmeralda's insight. Yeah, I'm just I'm just gonna try to do a persuasion. Like I'm just trying to persuade yeah, her sure. to like investigate this doll because obviously sure. we've been you know it, it impacted us somehow. So, um, 
So that will be okay. Uh, that is a what is that? Yeah, that's a, an eight. Okay. Yeah, Esmeralda, you're you're getting the sense that he's being a little weird and obsessive about these dolls right now. Can I mage hand smack that doll out of his hand? Yeah. Do you allow and that just... to happen, Felfer? Yeah, I'll let it happen. Okay. You easily smack it out of his hand. Dras what is going? Go what is going on with you? Listen, we should not be knocking things all over the place. I understand there is a disagreement. Let's just put them back and leave this room. Let's leave this room, yes, but also I need to address something. What is going on with you two? I'll look over at, at Travis and be like, we are, we are simply telling you what has happened to us. We were pricked in the fingers. And okay. it's... It's strange that you have not wanted to solve the problem. We're... You've been, oh, so, okay, so you've been pricked in the fingers, acting weird, and now insisting that I also need to touch these dolls as well. No, nope, okay. you don't need to. We can move. Where, the, where would you like to go next? Fair enough. I, I will no longer insist. And I'll, I'll pull, you know, pull back from, from Esmeralda and just basically put the doll back to where it was. Uh, and I'll just carefully step over the dolls and head into the hallway uh, and and look around to see who's there and wait. Okay. Was, was Noggins anywhere? Did Noggins see all of this? I'm having a, I'm having a Omega conundrum versus a Noggins conundrum. Because there's no way, I know I got a 12 on inside, but after all this just happened, there's no way in hell Noggins isn't curious even further about this. I'm going to message Noggins. Okay. And okay. I would say with, with so, Felfer's 8 persuasion, uh, he, there's, there's something behind what he's asking. It's not quite, even with your 12, it's not quite adding up. Okay, I, I, I message Noggins. Okay, so let me get this straight. Also, hello. But let me get this straight. So these two <laughs> come over to us, tell us they got pricked by these dolls, but then insist that we handle them, and then they're acting really weird. And I'm supposed to be okay with that. We're supposed to just be okay with that. I don't, what is happening? I don't respond to her. I'm just looking. Um, and no, I do respond. I say, you all need to be a lot quieter. I drop path without a trace, pass without a trace, I cast detect magic. Okay. Um, I was- Is losing pass without a trace something that we would feel happen to us? Yeah, you absolutely. would see, yeah, it, but in, even visually, there's like a slight color around all of your feet and that all that dissipates. Yeah. And you I, feel heavier, you feel like your, your, the, your movements make more of an impact in the, in the environment. Yeah, Sterling would probably see Muriel stiffen a little bit at that, and we'll, I'll just look at you and then head back out into the hallway to see what's going on. Just for one last thing, just to mess with these two, can I minor illusion one of the dolls in my hand? Okay, yeah. Dad, I picked up the doll. Are you happy? Does it just appear in your hand? No, I'll make it look like I reached down. So give me a give me a performance check, I'd say, Esmeralda, for that. Okay. And then is there a perception check f to be able to tell what it is? I think it's investigation. Ooh, I rolled a 13. Don't know. That's... Uh, give me a insight check, Dave. 13. With the detect magic uh, spell, Noggins, you don't uh, see anything that's magical in the room uh, except for what your characters are carrying. You don't detect okay. anything out, out of sync or awry. Okay. At this point. Uh, Travis is going to put his bag on the ground and start uh, digging through it, rifling through it, um, and he's going to find uh, a healing potion okay. and uh, pull it out and, and take that. Um, Esmeralda and Noggins, as you stand in the hallway amongst the dolls that have been kind of pull, thrown into the hall, mm -hmm. you both feel a prick on your legs. 
Esmeralda, you are going to take one point of piercing damage. And six points of necrotic damage. <laughs> and I'd like you to give me a charisma saving throw. Man, okay. And Noggins, you feel it, but it doesn't pierce your boot. So it doesn't make contact with your skin, but you definitely felt it. I'd like you both to give me perception checks, please. I rolled a dirty 20 for my charisma save. Natural uh, 20 for perception. <laughs> Sorry, continue on. Esmeralda. Go ahead, Esmeralda. What was that? Uh, dirty 20 for charisma, <laughs> but eight for perception. Okay. Um, so you feel uh, the room spin a little bit, but then it passes. Um, and, and sorry, what did you roll for perception? Eight? Eight. Okay. You look down, and you and nothing seems weird. All the dolls are just lying where they were. But Noggins, as you look down, you wa- you see one of the dolls that is lying there. It's got a needle in its hand, like almost like a sewing needle. And when you look at it, it hides it behind its back really quickly. And then just kind of lies there like this, as if motionless. A flame appears in my hand. And I look at that thing. And I look at Esmeralda. I'd like you all to roll initiative. No. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that was almost a natural 20. Yeah. Oh. Do you want us to put our initiative in chat? Nope, I'll oh. come around to you guys. Oh. Here we go. Sterling. 11. Dimitri is not here. Aw, rip. <laughs> Aw. Muriel. 15. Falfer. 15. Esmeralda. 14. Noggins. Seven. Travas. Six. Oh, he went 20. Nah, 14. Nah, mm. three or four. <laughs> womp, womp, womp. Okay. All of a sudden, you all watch as a number of these dolls go from lying to jumping up onto their feet. And all of them pull out these tiny little needles as they face you. This is when I can finally bring out all of the creepy little dolls. No. <laughs> that I 3D printed for this session. Uh, one, two, did you you hand painted a whole bunch of little dolls? That's Fourteen awesome. of them. Oh, also, uh, but also, oh. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what happens to the dolls in our bags? Oh, could I have three of them in my bag? Um, that's a good question. Um, right now, nothing that you can tell. You don't feel any sort of movement or anything like, oh, hey, I almost dropped that. Sorry, I just have to, there's so many that I have to count the ones that. Give me one second, <laughs> sorry. This is, this is pretty creepy. Talk amongst yourselves. I don't like this. Eh. I don't like this. Are they big, the only fat, ones man. in the room right now? The dolls are the only, who's in that room? Well, Sterling and I were down the hall because we had just come out of the door uh, feeling yeah. the uh, Pass Without Trace drop, but... Yeah. I'm in the Travis hallway. is in the hallway. Yeah, I, I went out in the hallway as well. Okay, so yeah. Well, you guys, you, you were still by the bed, Travas? Yeah. Uh, I, I said that I, I wanted to step... I stepped carefully past the dolls to go out to say, okay, let's move on to where okay, we're so going. Okay, so which side of the hallway do you want to be? Yeah, yeah, about there. Yeah, okay. kind of, kind of, yeah. All right. Actually, I'm going to take this wall out because the minis don't fit with the wall. So there's still a wall there, and there's still a cool. door there, but you are there, Travas. And there's a couple more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
Okay. I'll yell out. As I see this happen, Jay, I'll yell out to the others. I knew there was something strange about these dolls. Okay. All right. Yeah, you weren't very good at hiding it. I wonder 14. if that guard is going to turn around and see if, this. I don't know if I can get in close enough here, but you can see all these creepy. Um, <laughs> I do not yes. like that. Even I the don't. dolls, like their heads are a little... <laughs> Hero Forge! Hello. They were created with Hero Forge. When in doubt and you need 14 creepy little dolls, you size down your Hero Forge mini and you make them real creepy. Okay. All right. So... <laughs> The it's best great. ad for Hero Forge ever. What's yeah, that? exactly. <laughs> best ad for Hero Forge ever. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, immediately, two converge on you, Esmeralda. Uh, two. Actually, this is what we're gonna do. You guys are in this hallway over here. I'm gonna take this wall out of here too. Shout out to Wiz Kids, Warlock Tiles. Um, you guys were by this other room, correct? Um, you guys were still looking in here, Sterling and at the, Muriel. At the cell. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Sterling, yeah I don't think met, we had made it yeah, so you far were, down the hall. You were here. You were kind of both looking in. Two of the dolls are going to uh, attack you or, or ch ch uh, run in your direction, Sterling. They can't get All to right. Muriel because she is hidden. Two dolls are there. One of them goes over to um, Travas. Two more there. Two are going to go to Falfer, uh, and the rest are going to kind of converge here. Okay, all right, lots of stuff going on. Whew. Give me one sec, guys. Okay, all right, here we go. This is a lot of dolls. Um, the first two, three, four on you, Noggins. Attack. Cool. cool. Armor class. Cool. 17. Two of them hit. Okay. Um, you feel one of the one of the needles um, uh, gets lodged in your boot, and then they they're trying to get it out. And they can't. They're like they put their little tiny feet on your on your uh, feet, I, and they're trying to I take also it guess, out. You said boot. I don't have a boot. I, I, I'm oh, your hooves. hooves. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> one gets kind of like caught in your hoof, and into your hoof, but it's not quite making purchase. Uh, ah. I did say boot. That's true. Um, get off. You, you take two piercing damage. Mm -hmm. You also take ten necrotic damage. Mm -hmm. And I'd like you to give me a charisma saving throw. Is this a magical effect? Uh, no. That's a six. Uh, it's necrotic in nature. Uh, six. That is not enough. Um, you feel slowed. Your speed is reduced by 10, and you must reduce. Wait, it's necrotic in nature. What do you mean by it's, that? It's a curse. Or is it just, it's just a. It's a curse. It's not necessarily ma a magical effect. I guess a curse would be a magical effect. Why? What are you getting at? I have a, I have, I have advantage on, on magical effects against me. That's what I'm asking. If you don't think it's magic, I mean, I, I would argue a curse is magical, but it might, but it might be yeah. a different. Okay, thing, but no, yeah, we'll say it's magical. That's fine. So you get, you, you're saying you get advantage on, yeah, well, what's the yeah, actual I have, ability? I have magic resistance as a satyr. So I have advantage against spells and magical okay. effects. Yeah, then I'd give, yep, yeah, I'd allow it. Okay. It doesn't matter. Oh, 12? That is not enough, unfortunately. Oh, it screen. is. It is enough. Yep, you're good. Um, oh. You still take, you still take the piercing damage. You still take the necrotic damage. Okay, go again. Done. Okay. Yeah. And again, the room starts to spin a little bit, but then it goes away. Okay. Um, I don't like this. One is gonna attack Esmeralda. It misses. You watch as it tries to like stab your foot, Esmeralda, your non-prosthetic foot, and you move it out of the way, and it kind of stabs into the ground. 
Um, Falfer, two jump on you, <laughs> and they both miss as they kind of jump on you. They start to climb up your back, and and they have their their and you you manage to kind of like move around and stop them, and then same with you, Travas. Wow, not rolling well. Uh, same with you, Travas. It kind of jumps onto your leg and starts to try to stab you, and it's not it's not working. Two on Sterling. This isn't going to go. Oh, natural twenty. Ooh. I am Ooh. sorry, Sterling. Um, oh, dang. That is a twenty-four, and then the I'm, I'm assuming the eleven doesn't. You get one piercing damage. Uh, can I use my reaction to make it re-roll the nat twenty and use the new roll? Yeah. Because that, that's runic shield. Yeah. Nice. Now's the time. Yeah. Yeah. It's not enough. Nicely done. Whoa. So as it stabs in, it, it finds it, and you're like, <laughs> you hear like a little sound, and then it tries to stab, and it stops it. And this energy kind of bursts from the area, and it stops its attack. Um, and the other one did not hit. Um, and these three, uh, these three are in the room. They are holding an action currently. Okay. Um, next up in the order. That's a lot of little dolls. Amira, you're up. Falfer, you're on deck. Okay. Can I reach one of the creepy dolls that went after Sterling? Um, you'd have to move. Uh, hmm. um, what's your reach on your weapon? I. It's just a rapier. It's just so a I rapier, don't. so it's five feet. Yeah. Uh, you could. What's the rule on occupying space? Um, you can't. You can move through allies. You can't move through enemies. So I could technically like move into the space, and then I'd have to move back out. Yeah. So you, I'll allow you to do that. I'll allow you to kind of squeeze in, attack, and then move back to the space that you're in. Mm, but that means they get an opportunity to attack on me. That would. Yeah. Crap. Um. Unless you you can't bonus action. I can, but can I would like to do bonus action something else if <laughs> I have the chance. So. Um, You know what? Well, I'll move in and then I'll bonus action disengage to get back out so I can try to stab one okay. of these things. So I'll pull out my rapier and stabby stabby. Okay. That's a natural 20. Woo! Uh, natural 20. After all, all the ones and all the bad rolls, there's a tw yeah. so does a 27 hit. Yes, it does. Okay. And since Sterling is next to it and Sterling's an ally, I get sneak attack, right? Yep. Okay. I'm going to demolish this doll. Let's see what happens. Uh... <laughs> So it's nine for the rapier, and then... Oh, it's a lot of sneak attack. Uh, 28 additional Ooh. for the sneak attack. Yeah, you strike this doll through, and the stuffing just kind of spills out the back, along with what appears to be kind of like a dark blood sort of something also goes out the back and it goes limp on the rapier. And you kind of lift the rapier and you've got this doll limp on the end of the blade. And I saw blood come out the back? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. It was I just like this weird dark substance that just kind of sprayed out the back. Uh, nope, 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 nope. Can I shake that off before I disengage and move back again? Yes, you can. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, gonna, gonna do, that. do that. I'm gonna do that. Okay. Um, And yeah, I'll disengage and move behind Sterling and be ready okay. for, I guess, anything. Yep. From Falfer, I said you were next, but yeah. just before you're able to go, you all hear a voice at the end of the hallway, and it is the guard. And the guard says, what's going on here? <laughs> and he pulls out a weapon. That is where we're going to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <sighs> Jason Azevedo. Love My you guys. buddy. We'll see you in a bit. My buddy! Um, hello, I'm Alina Lee. I'm a level four sugar gnome wizard. I love the support the Discord community gives each other and their willingness to help all players. And I truly look forward to playing every day. So come join us. Hello guys, I'm Kostash Morach, fourth level human druid. Uh, dudes, uh, what is the best thing in our community? They receive everybody. 
they help everybody. And during these difficult times, a place where you can be accepted and play as much as we play and has a little part of our anxieties and suffering going away from us is something and a place really special. So sorry for not having like the best English of the world, but that's it. I love our Realmsmith Discord and our crew and everybody else, everybody else. Join us. It's really awesome. I'm Noggins, a level seven satyr druid of dreams. I'm Rico, a level 18 Aracocra monk of the sun. And I am Rorschach, or you can call me Rory. And I'm a level three College of Creation bard. And in a few words or less, Realmsmith is a community that really keeps me on my toes. The role play that happens within the Discord server is some of the best I've ever had the honor of partaking in. And the community truly cares about each other. And it's such a wonderful place to be. So join us. Hi everyone, I'm Darby and I play Tyel, who is a level 15 half-elf ranger on the Realmsmith Discord server for Into the Mist. And one of the things that I really love about this community is that it's a community. There's so many people that genuinely care about you. There's so many different characters and stories to be told. And I love that I can honestly just escape for however long I want to into this world. Um, and so, yeah, I hope you'll join us. Hello, my name is Niall and I play Barf Battlebrain, a level 10 Dwarven Champion in the Into the Mist Realmsmith Discord. The reason I like the Discord so much is it gives me the chance to have fantastic roleplay opportunities with people from all across the globe and I've made many friends whilst doing so. So come and join us, it doesn't matter where you're based, there's always a home for you here. Good luck, hope to see you soon. Hello, I am Elder Sidivar Baba Negra. Level 10 Eldritch Knight and Friendly Camp Weirbear. I am also Sid Jok Lam, Master of Fortune to the Plank King, and Blood Muzzle, Thorn in the Side of Camp Gakis. For those of you that know me in the real world, I'm John, and proud to be a member of the Smith Guardian team. But enough about me, down to why we are truly here. And that is celebrate Realmsmith and the community. No family they have managed to grow over the last year they truly have created a safe haven for all doesn't matter if you're a full-time gamer part-time clicking math rock roller or just new to role play full stop whatever your background time zone or interest you will find like-minded individuals to adventure with and create your own tales whilst enjoying the dungeons and dragons experience so the Discord platform and live streams from Realmsmith really have already helped forge so many tight friendships, a real sense of camaraderie and a place to call home. If you told me a year ago I'd be moderating streams with the likes of the amazing Neurological, Critical Bard, Matthew Lillard, even Luke Gygax himself, I'd have laughed at them. And laughed harder still if they suggested I'd be writing content for consumption across multiple time zones. But testimony to what Realmsmith have built it's now a reality. So the big thing is, what are you waiting for? Come join us and start your journey. Welcome to Dwarven Forge. This is everything you need to know about our terrain in 60 seconds. Ready? Let's go. We hand sculpt our pieces for maximum detail and artistry, infusing passion into every millimeter of our work. Everything is available beautifully hand painted so you can start playing right away or you can choose unpainted to paint everything yourself. Our pieces are completely modular, so you can use the same sets to create a new adventure every time. Most pieces have embedded anchor magnets that affix to our terrain trays for secure building and for revealing rooms as your players discover them. We create everything out of Dwarvenite, our top secret PVC formula that's nearly indestructible. We pack our pieces with as many features as possible, such as swappable LEDs to quickly change the look of your scene. We offer magnetic accessories to add flavor or increase the danger. 
A one-inch tactical grid is sculpted into our floors, hidden in dungeon flagstones, natural rocks, or sticks and plants. In addition to sculpted pieces, we make terrain trays to use as a vibrant graphic base for your build. We offer a range of environments, including dungeons, caverns, cities, castles, sewers, forests, mountains, streets, burrows, ice, and hellscape. And that's just the beginning. We have a passionate fan base who can tell you all about it. And that's everything you need to know about Dwarven Forge in 60 seconds. The games we play are the stories we create. The fortress doors swing open. Every story is unique. And the sound of war drums rises. Sometimes our stories come to us when we least expect them. We need to be ready no matter where inspiration strikes. And sometimes our stories are told over great distances. No matter where your journey leads you, or how your story is told. The games we play are the stories we create. Sirenscape can help make yours epic. Sirenscape is searchable, fast, and customizable from any device with no need to pre-install any sound. Adding epic atmosphere to your game has never been easier.
we're back. If you guys could only hear what happens on break <laughs> when we're all just chatting. Um, okay, um, you hear a voice say, um, what are you doing? And immediately you hear a long sword and a short sword leave its sheaths, scabbards, and the guard charges Travas, who happens to be the first person down that hallway. Oh no. Um, two long sword attacks. It's gonna be a nine. So, so uh, Jay. Yep. I'm not gonna stop this, but I did. <laughs> but you are. The friends. <laughs> I yeah. am. Yeah. Yeah. I did mention the friends. So it's right now. Is there any hesitancy or? He didn't see any of the friends, so he has that no is also, idea. That is very true. Who the friends are. Never mind, Travis. You're getting, ass, you're getting you're getting a butt beat. And you're kind of in the doorway. I will allow you on your turn to say something and try and persuade him otherwise. But right now, he sees somebody. He doesn't know who it is. He sees a ton of dolls. He doesn't know. He's attacking the first person that he That's thinks valid. is a, I'm here for it. The, I will not the, fight you. The other one is a 19 with a short sword attack. Uh, that is going to be a 1d6. That... Uh, for uh, seven points of damage to you, Travas, with his short sword. And then you also hear um, Travas specifically, because you're closer to the to the hallway, you hear a voice yell from downstairs and boot falls starting to, to kind of speed on the ground floor. Okay? Okay. Falfer, you're up. Esmeralda, you're on deck. Yeah, I, I have two on me. <laughs> yep. I'm just gonna like, ah, grab them. Yep. And throw them to the ground and try to hold them down. If that's okay. okay. So give me a, a grapple check. Okay. Um, I don't know if you can do both. You could do one. Okay. I will, uh, which one is, uh, is there one that seems to be stronger than the other or are they just all, okay. I'll oh, just okay. pick one. Okay. Take the one on my right shoulder. Yep. Bring it down and like try to <laughs> try to muzzle its mouth like. Rah! Okay. And uh, and grapple it down. Yep. Athletics. Uh, yeah, athletics. And it is okay. acrobatics or athletics. Uh, technically that's a negative one. <laughs> okay. Um, it rolled a twenty. So uh, you go to grab it and it, like jumps. It does come some weird flips on your shoulder as you're trying to grab it, and it's just like <laughs> like all around your shoulder, uh, uh, trying to get away from you. So it doesn't work. That is your. Uh, um, do you uh, want to move? You're kind of stuck. You you can move out. Uh, you could move out because there's uh, actually dolls on the other side of the two characters, so you can move further into the room. But you're now surrounded by seven dolls. Uh, two of which uh, are on top of you right now. Yeah, and if I leave, isn't that an opportunity attack against me? Yes. Okay, so I'm just going to, uh, I'm just gonna, tr yeah, I'm just gonna stick around. Okay, I like it. As Merelda, you are up. Sterling, you're on deck. You're muted. Good. All right. So I, I am. Am I within this doll bedroom, or I'm out in the hallway? So you are I can't see. In the hallway, you are right here. I know it's hard to kind of tell what's going on. Oh, there I am. Okay. You're here. There's two dolls at your back, and Falfer is right in front of you with two dolls on top of him. Okay, the two dolls behind me, sorry, Falfer. Um, I am going to um, hit one because I get two um, weapon attacks. So I'm going to attack with um, my rapier. Or I get two, two rapiers and a short sword attack. Yeah. So I will uh, attack the first one I see behind me with a short sword. Okay. Ugh, for only 12 points to hit. Uh, that is not enough. Not enough to hit. So you know what, I'm gonna hit it, try, I'm gonna try that one, the same one again. Okay. That one's a 21 to hit. That's a hit. Oh shit! Sorry, I rolled uh, short sword damage, it's not uh, it's not good. rapier damage. Let me see. Rapier damage is uh, ten points. Okay. And I'll, you know what? I'll, I'll hit the same one again. Sure. So you come with... across and you lob off one of its little padded arms. And with my last attack, it's a twenty-two to hit. That's a hit. That's a short. This is short sword. This is short sword. 
for five points of damage. And you end up kind of clipping the side of it as well. And you hear, <laughs> as it kind of like laughs at you and kind of runs around your, your feet. Mm-mm. No, Mm-mm. uh-uh. Gosh. Uh, all right. Sterling, you're up. Noggins, you're on deck. Okay, so one of the two by my feet is a dead, right? Um, is Muriel yes, just... Muriel killed it, yeah. That is correct. Moitalized it, okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take a couple swings at the one in, uh, that's remaining. Okay. With the magical longsword. Okay. 19 and 18 to hit. Those are both hits. Okay. All right, that's nine and eight points of damage. Magical. Nine and eight, all right. You start to carve up this doll. (laughs) And uh, I'm using the sanguine dice, and I gotta tell you, they sound gross. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that's squish. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Noggins, you're up. Travas, you're on deck. Oh, well. Um, I will hear the individual um, come up um, behind, and I say, "Ah, hell, these these dolls came to life. Ah, uh, these are not not good. Don't don't hit my friend though. Hit hit them. They they're, they're bad, bad." Persuasion with advantage. Maybe locked in doors and turn the lights down. Um. Advantage. Oh, 21. <laughs> Joel almost spit tick. Took his uh, like, spit wait, tick. I know that song. What is that <laughs> song? Okay, he looks up at you and his disposition changes slightly from like total anger, a little confused, his short sword bloody, um, and uh, in front of, and, and kind of, you can tell he's holding himself currently. Okay. okay. Uh, um, and was that my action? No, that's not your action. Oh, okay. Uh, cool. Uh, there are two, four. There are four. There are four on me that tried to hit me. Uh, did I say four? Three. There are more than two that are on me right now. Yes. Regardless, that's really not okay. I think you're right. Um, it was four. Yeah. Um, and and I I just stare at them and go, no. And I, um, you hear, take, yes, yes, and yes, And then yes. as I, as they say that, I rip a hole into the air yep. and they all hear, no, as I cast summon Faye and nice. Spike comes out. Nice. Um, <laughs> Spike is out. I don't have Spike's Spike out. I, don't have I need to Spike design yet. him and, and Hero Forge to send it to you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll use this rat as Spike. Where does Great. Spike appear? Right next to one of them. He's, it's a it's a small, so okay. it can go wherever. Okay, so he'll just appear behind them there in the other room. Okay. Cool. Uh, and that's my action, and I will... Uh... One second. Oh, oh, that's why I love this spell, because I don't have to use my bonus action to make him attack. Ha ha ha. Who got hurt? Someone got hurt. Someone Tra- else got hurt. Travos Was got it? hurt? Mm, do I care about Travos? Fine. Uh, and I look at Travas and say, this is your fault. Uh, and I heal you for, um, uh, I use, what I use, what I use, what I use, what is my dice? There you go. Uh, let me do it right here real quick. Uh, ooh, yeah, great. That's 10. Nope. Is, do I add anything? Six, six, six. Yes. Um, six points of health. Plus one temporary health. Nice. That's that. Um, nice. Immediately after me, Spike is just going to stab because that's what he does best. Um, he's going to stab once with his short sword, which is more like a tiny sword for him. Uh, that's a natural one. Will not hit. Yeah. Fortunately, I'll just allow the natural one to go because I think you guys are in a bad place. Travas, um, you notice. <laughs> that uh, the guard st- like attacked you and the Noggins yelled that and you can see his disposition change and he's currently holding his attack in front of you. Uh, you also have one of these creatures that are around your leg trying to stab you. What do you do? Uh, I'm going to use my 
action to pull my bag around to my front and I'm going to pull out a potion of invulnerability and drink that. Okay. What does that do? Uh, let me quickly read it. Uh, for one minute after you drink this potion, you have resistance to all damage. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to... For how long? Uh, for one minute. Okay. And I'm going to uh, attempt to move all the way down the hall to where Sterling is. <laughs> uh, you can't, because there is dolls the whole way. So, so not enough... Ah, uh, uh, darn. Okay. They are small um, creatures. So, um, also that rule is also escaping me regarding movement for small, around small creatures. You could try and parkour above them. They're really small. So I would say that you could attempt kind of an, uh, I'll allow you to attempt an acrobatics check to kind of get up and like across the wall, like do like a run uh, kind of along the wall. Sure, sure. Yeah, Give me okay. an acrobatics uh, check with disadvantage, please. Uh, I'm not sure I'll need disadvantage. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I rolled a three and then a two. So it's a six. <laughs> yeah. So with a six, you kind of start to run up the wall. And you realize I'm not going to make it. And then you stop and you get back down. Uh, I, I just look dejected at my feet. Okay. Um, you still have an action. Oh, yeah? That was movement. Yeah, you're not going to... Taking the potion wasn't an action? That's great. Oh, yeah, it is. Sorry. Totally is. Forgot the potion. Never mind. <laughs> now it's the doll's turn. Okay. Uh, the... <clears throat> okay. Um, noggins on you. It's natural 20. Mm. 7. Sure. 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 17. Sure. Oh, sorry, 18. And sure. 2. So 2 of them hit. The natural 20, you take two piercing damage. And 12 can, necrotic. Can oh. I use my reaction on that nat 20 to do my runic shield again? Because he's within 30 feet of me. Uh, you're lucky, yeah. Okay, so Crap. it has to reroll Crap. and keep the new roll. Okay. Nice. Uh -huh. That is still a 20, but dirty. Okay. So instead, mm -hmm. you take one... Uh huh. Plus six. Necrotic? Great. And then for the other one, you take one plus six. Uh -huh. Roll two sixes, uh -huh. sorry. Great. So you say he, he saved you six points of damage. Uh, I'd Thanks. Like you, you also. Uh, I need a, a, a charisma saving. Two charisma saving throws. Two, two separate ones? Cool. Yeah. I'll do it like this. Okay, that's. Uh, uh, 16 for the first one. Okay, passes. Oh, yeah, yeah, 19 on the die for the second one. Okay, both of them pass. You shake off the effects. Stop uh, it! Esmeralda to uh, attack you. It's not enough. What's your armor class? 18. Ooh, just missed. Um, Falfer to attack you. That one's going to hit. You take one plus one. So uh, one piercing, one necrotic. Okay. Uh, and the other one is also going to come after you. So oh. That one also hits one piercing and three necrotic. Okay. Travos, the one that's on you is attacking you. That is going to hit one plus one necrotic. And Sterling. Uh and, and so, so with resistance to those, half. Uh, I take a half of each. Yeah, so you just take one point, I guess. I guess that would. Uh, one round it is one, so it's one. You still take the two. Um, and then, because two different attacks, really. Uh, and then. Peanut uh, gallery over there. And then Sterling. Um, does a 20 hit? Dirty 20? Nope. No, okay. You are good. I think that is all of them. Um, this one can't do anything currently, and that is it. Okay. 
Um, next is uh, technically the guard. I had allowed you to go first, Muriel, last time, but the guard is actually rolled just higher than you on initiative, so you will go in a moment. Uh, okay. That guard um, looks at you, Travas, gauges the situation, and then attacks the doll on your body. Uh, with a natural one, the <sighs> doll jumps on his sword and runs up his sword and a, and and jumps on the guard's face. <laughs> um, <laughs> and he, then he misses with the second one as well. I uh, mean, he has a doll in his face. That's fair. Yeah. Yep. You guys <laughs> here, or I would say you, Travas, give me a perception check, please. All right. Uh, 11. Okay. You hear distant footsteps, but you don't know how far or where. Miro, you're up. Falfer, you're on deck. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing I did last time. Let's start with the attacks. I'll reach forward with my yep. rapier and go, go after this other creepy doll. Uh, does a 22 hit? It sure does. Awesome. Not not as much awesome sneak attack, but let's see. So eight on the rapier and another 14. Does it kill it? Yes, yeah, sure does. Awesome. Um, so then this time what I'll do is, so I've kind of reached around the side of Sterling, yep. stabbed this thing. Yep. And then as I'm backing away again, I'll leave my hand on your shoulder for just a second and say, we need to get out of here now and I'm going to use as a bonus action um, the help action so that you have advantage on your next attack because I can do that as a master of tactics. Nice. And do that to against a target that is within 30 feet of me. Wow, that's great. So, and then I'm going to remain here at the end of the hall okay. because Muriel, Muriel thinks we're made yeah. and that's it, we got a GTFO. So yeah. okay. she's... She's gonna hold the the back of the hall. The hall. Okay, oh, I like it. All right, Falfer, you're up. Esmeralda, you're deck. Do I see Muriel doing that? Uh, you're in the room. You, you don't see her at all. Oh, you're, okay. Don't see Sterling or her. Okay. Um, I will. Uh, yeah, I'll just try to stab the one that I have nearest me okay. with my with the, my dagger. The nearest you is on you, left shoulder. Oh, okay. <laughs> Please don't roll a natural one. Please don't roll a natural one. Um. Okay, so, ooh, yeah, I'm gonna try, I'm going to attempt a stabby stab. Okay. Um, stab yourself. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, so. Oh, sorry. Uh, phew, twenty. Here we go. Okay, so I rolled a two. <laughs> it's your day. Which is double. Yeah. A one. Yes. Yeah, and nothing bad happens, but you, you're you having a hard time stabbing this creature who is currently on your shoulder. You're trying to, like, not get yourself, and it's just not fun. Yeah, I hate this. <laughs> uh, Esmeralda, you're up. Sterling, you're on deck. Um, I'm going to attack. There's still two that are nearest to me. Yep. Okay. Two at your feet, and then one just off to the side that's fighting Noggins. Uh, the ones at my feet, because I don't want to get stabbed in the foot again. Um, I am going to attack. So the first one, I'm going to attack with uh, Rapier. Yep. No. F uh, 15 to hit. Does that hit? Uh, yes, it does. Okay, cool. So that's 10 points of piercing damage. Okay. It's, it's and that was the up. one that was already injured, correct? You yeah. had injured one, right? Yeah. Yeah, twice. And you lob off one of its legs, and now it kind of falls on its side and is still kind of like climbing towards you with this horrible cackle. Seriously? Okay. Uh, man, okay. I If it's still up, I'm still going to attack it. Again. Uh, 22 to hit. Yep. For nine points of piercing damage. You chop that one in half and it goes limp. Okay, sweet. 
And then that last one, I'll attack with a short sword. I mean, or the second one near me. Yep. 26 to hit. That's a hit. Uh, but for only five points of damage. Okay. Got it. All right. All right. Uh, Sterling, you're up. Noggins, you're on deck. All right. Um, so the one that was in front of me is now gone, right? It's dead? Yes. Yeah, there was no okay. nothing in between you and the rest of the party. All right. Then I'm going to move up next to Esmeralda and start hacking away. Okay. As soon as you roll up on Esmeralda, you see one at her feet kind of like sidestepping. <laughs> And trying to, yeah. And you'll have right. advantage on this first attack. Two swings. Uh, let's see. Bada bada bada. Uh, twenty-two to hit That's for the hit. first, including the, yeah, and then a uh, fifteen to hit on the second. Yep, yeah, those are hits. Okay. Thanks for the advantage, by the way. That's awesome. Okay, seven points, and then. Four points. So 11? Of damage. 11 points of damage okay. against that one. All right. And you take big swaths out of it as it kind of opens up and stuffing kind of pours out yeah. of it a little bit. Okay. Okay. Uh, Noggins, you're up. Travas, you're on deck. All right. Okay. 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 So firstly, um, Spike is going to uh, stab the one that it missed, cursing him out in Sylvan. Yep. Um... Uh, 17 on the die, which makes that a lot. Um, that's going to be... Do you care about damage types? Not for these, no. Okay. Uh, yeah, I do, actually. Force or piercing? No. Cool. Um, then that is 8, uh, 11, 14 points of piercing damage. Very good. Yep. Uh, and... As a bonus action, uh, it's going to... It has bonus actions. I still can't believe that. Uh, as a bonus action, it's just going to teleport next to a different one. Uh, how many are on Esmeralda? Uh, one. Okay. Uh, I'll just get one that's kind of on its own that doesn't seem like it's on anybody yet, potentially. Okay. The that's only in the room. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it has to see where it's going. Then never mind. It won't do anything. Okay. Uh, thank you. No and then as an, then for me, what I'm going to do is uh, just flame one of these things. I'm going to produce a flame and, and throw it at the doll. Okay. Um, that, nope. Okay. Goes wide. All right, Travas, you are currently looking at uh, the guard in the, in, the, in the eyes, and it looked like he was going to attack you, but then attacked the doll on your shoulder. Um, there is still that doll on you. What do you do? Oh, I'm also going to oh, bomb sorry. of summer court it, myself. It sorry. Up. What? Sorry? I'm going to bomb of summer court myself okay. because, ow, okay. that's it. It climbed up the sword and is now on, its, on his face, on the guard's face. What do you do? Uh, I'm going to turn to everybody and say, there are footsteps coming. It's time to leave right now. And I'm going to reach into my bag. Yeah. I take out an alchemist's fire and throw it at the guard's feet. Okay, you are mm. at the guard's feet. How far back can I push myself? Um, there are currently, you can try another acrobatics check to try and kind of jump and leap over everyone. You're going to have to travel. Oh, I thought I had at least like five five feet between you don't. us. Uh, you could go into the room. You could like dip into this room here. There's a wall there. <laughs> yeah, no, but there was a door. So you could dip past past uh, the imp or the yeah, fae. Yeah, if, if you, if you, yeah, if you, if you're, if you'd let me yeah. uh, back up and throw it as I back into that room. Sure. Well, you can back into that uh, room I'll, and then toss it right here. Sure. Yeah. I, I, I don't necessarily want to just hit him um yeah. but more the the structure right okay so you kind of throw it in at his feet 
yeah, to kind of cause a, a a block between him and the people that are coming and us. Yeah, give me an attack. It's uh, 15. Okay. To hit the wall. Uh, the that's wall. enough. Um, as you as it hits the wall, it kind of explodes. What's the damage on it? It's just 1d4. Okay. Uh, for, for fire, fire damage. Yeah, roll that. That's two. Okay. The guard and the doll take two fire damage. Did you hit the guard? What? Y- yes. The one that is charmed? Yes. Yes. They oh. need to make a um, another save. Yep. Is it on his turn or now? Immediately. What's the DC? Uh, 17. Fails. Great. And I urge everybody, it's time to leave. Says the one who tried to get us to get dolls. <laughs> okay. I mean, I was all for burning this place down when I saw the dolls. I just thought we'd be out of it at the time. But here we go. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to find fire, but I can't find fire that works. So that's fine. The fire exists right here. This fire. Okay, fire lots of fire. All right. Oh, dear. Um, that was Travas. It is the dolls' turns again. Uh, two of the dolls are going to turn on your fey. Two of the dolls are going to attack you. That's not enough. Uh, 14 is not enough. Corre- uh, 15 is not it enough. Is not. Noggins? Nope. Attacking the fey. 12 uh-huh. is not enough. Let me check. Let me check real quick before you start saying that. Nope. Dirty 20. Enough. Is that enough? Sure, yeah, fine. Okay, one piercing. Okay. Four necrotic. Uh, I need to, how many? Four necrotic. Five, cool, great, so. And charisma saving throw for your creature. So 25, okay, cool. Yep, it's fine, that's an 18 on the die. 18? Yep. Okay. That's an 18 on the die, yeah. We yep. got that. Um. The one is going to attack you again, Esmeralda. It misses. There are now four on uh, Falfer. No, three on Falfer. Hit, miss, hit. Two more piercing damage, Falfer. And three more necrotic. Okay, I'll yell out. We must leave. Um, yeah, the other one can't really get through, so that is it for them. After all that, is the guards' t- uh, turn? This this thing's on its face. There's an explosion that just occurred. It is going to attempt to grapple this thing, uh, and it fails in grappling it and he's still fighting with this and he actually kind of steps back into the hallway away from the fire with this doll on his face. Poor guard. (laughs) It's like the worst night. He was probably covering for somebody. Wasn't even supposed to be here today. Yeah. 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 Or or it's his last day of retirement. You know, it's what Yeah, Yeah. exactly. (laughs) And you see another guard appear at the end of the hallway and start to kind of like talk to the other guard, like what is happening? And like really kind of confused and flustered as to what's happening uh, as there's kind of fire in the hallway, down that hallway. Um, and dolls. Muriel, you're up. Fall for your on deck. Um, oh jeez. Could I shoot a longbow down this hall without hitting my friends or are we, is it too? Yeah, I'd allow it. Cause really the okay. only person in the way is Sterling and you can kind of get around him and Set a, a set one off, and, yeah. Who are you attacking? Okay, so wait, there's one at his feet. Uh, sorry. So yeah, so there is one right in front of him who who he's fighting, and Esmeralda's fighting. Then okay. there's two more, and then fire. Okay. Um, two actually, then the instead fight. of the sh- instead of the short bow, I I will continue to do what I was doing before. I will rape, move into the space, yep. rapier, and then we'll see what happens. Okay. Uh, 25 to hit. To hit. That's going to be nine of the rapier and 14 for the sneak attack. 
dead. Awesome. Then I will move back. The one in front and... of Sterling and Esmeralda goes down. Awesome. Then I'll move back. Um, who looks like they're in the most that I can see is in the most dire straits. Um, yeah, I don't know if I can see you, though. There That's are the four no. people around Noggins and his fae. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm like, I'm Noggins like, is definitely the most in trouble right now that you can see. Okay. <laughs> um, then I will give Noggins the help action. Okay. As I back away again to, to get out of the way um, so that you have advantage on your next attack, and I'll, I'll call out and say, let's get to the window, let's get to the window, and back away again. Okay, and just to the back of the hallway again? Uh, yeah, so I'm out of the way of the door in case yep. people start coming this way. I like it. Okay, Falfer, uh, your current situation, Esmeralda's in front of you. Sterling, is, uh, just in the doorway, Esmeralda is. Just to the right of that is Sterling. Uh, and you have three dolls behind you and two dolls beside you fighting Noggins. Um, so you actually have the ability, if you wanted to, to get past Esmeralda and Sterling and down the hall because you're passing I'll... through friendly. <laughs> yes, please. I will do that. Okay. Uh, you will get attack of opportunities, of course. Unless right. you take the disengage action and go. Uh, you know what? I'm going to disengage okay. and go. Okay. You want to go uh, five. Uh, we're going to say five, 10, 15, 20 puts you at the door and in front sure. of Muriel. Sounds like a plan. You want to go into the room? Uh, Yes. Okay. I'll go in. She's yeah. as she's ushering me in. 25, 30 puts you in front of the, the closed window. Okay. Okay. Esmeralda, you're up. Sterling, you're on deck. Do I see Noggins in trouble? Yes. You were right beside him. You were both fighting in that hallway. Um, and you see that you're, he's he is currently surrounded by two of them in front. And then his fae is fighting two of them behind. I'm... I don't know what spell I could do that's not going to hit. If I do a sickening radiance spell, does that hurt my friends or does that is that everybody within range? Good question. Of it, I don't or... know. I'm not familiar with that spell, but there isn't anybody behind you now. That room is full of one, two, three, four, five, six dolls, and there is nobody in that area of your friends. Okay. Noggins is beside you. So if there's something that you could spread outwards in that cool. direction you could hit them and nobody else okay uh hmm do i want a deck save or do i want to do a con save for this let's do uh let's have them all make a con save because i will cast sickening radiance in that room okay and and that is a 30 foot diameter what's the dc 14. Do they take half damage? And, and what's the what's the uh, radius? Like, how, how, so how does it work? You um, pick it's a point. A Thirty. F- it's a thirty foot. Yeah, it's a thirty foot um, sphere. Yeah. And uh, it's a concentration spell that lasts up to ten minutes. So, uh, within range, any of the creature that moves within that area for the first time that creature must succeed on a con save or take 4d10 radiant damage, suffer one level of exhaustion and emit a dim greenish light in a five foot radius. That makes it impossible okay. for the creature to benefit from being invisible. Wow. The light and any of the level of exhaustion caused by the spell uh, go, okay, so that level goes away when the spell ends, but they're also, mm. yeah, yeah. So they can't, because of the green light, they can't be invisible. Okay, so there's six. There's six in there. I'm gonna say that that okay. dome kind of covers the entirety of the room, yeah. um, which is awesome. And I am going to roll, sorry, hang on one sec. I don't have the dome, okay. Uh, so the first so one passes. Anytime it, sorry, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, so the first time, so the first time it, I, I emit it, and then also on all of their subsequent turns, turns. Yeah. they have to re-roll that con save. Okay, so first one passes, second one fails. You said 16 is the? What was the DC? 14. 14. 14. Third one fails. So one success. uh, Sorry, one success, two fails, three fails, four fails, five fails, 
So five failed, one success. Hey, so five fail. So the ones that fail take 20 points of radiant damage. Very oh, good. And suffer a level of exhaustion or are all emitting a green light. Okay. Wow. Hey, what do one, exhausted dolls look like? Two. Terrifying. <laughs> three. <laughs> Four. I imagine, like, you know those dolls that you turn, you put back and, you, and they go to sleep and their lids go down? They're like half. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, they're uh, half. They're two, just three. like shaking. Oh, and that's then on creepy. The, on the, make it any worse, of those babe. dolls, any of those dolls on their turn also have to reroll that con save. Okay. Okay. So all of those dolls took 20. Mm -hmm. The one that passed took, takes how many? I don't think they take half damage on okay. this. It doesn't say. Okay. Yeah. Very good. And then they have one level of exhaustion, correct? Mm -hmm. And that is a uh, disadvantage on ability checks. Is one level of exhaustion. Yep. Right, I think? Or is it, no, is it the speed? It's Hang on. ability checks. Is yep. it ability checks? Okay. Yeah. All yeah, right. it's after that that it gets really bad. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, very good, Esmeralda. Would you like to move Esmeralda? Uh, there is one doll. Yeah, because I already, I already you. cast it. Mm. One doll. Sure, I'll try. I'll I'll move away from it, and if it has to make an opportunity attack, Mrs. that's fine. Where do you want to go? Okay, I'm gonna move out towards that room, but I want to stay in the hallway in case okay. anything pops up. I'm gonna. You're right in front of that. Muriel. Sterling, you're up. Noggins, you're on deck. All right, <clears throat> I'm going to move into the room, and I'm gonna try and basically be the shield while others get out okay um yeah i'm i'm gonna use my bonus action yeah for giant's might since i can't grow in this space i won't grow but i'll still get the bon the bonus damage okay you can right. still a large creature can still be in a five foot space it just there, there there's rules there i wish i knew uh but how high is the room uh it's about 10 foot ceiling 10 foot ceiling okay well if if you think Big Sterling would fit, then I would go Big Sterling. He would fit. It'll just, there, there'll be certain things that he can and can't do or get an advantage or disadvantage on certain things. All right. Um, yeah, it, it says my size doesn't change if, if I lack room to become large, but I, I'm assuming that since there is room to become large, that I just, I'll just be big. I like using point. Big Sterling, so we're just going to use him. Okay. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> So I'm I'm For moving into effect. the room. <laughs> okay, so you you want to be in the hallway or you want to be in the room? I want to be in the room with the dolls. In the room with the dolls. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to get in the space so that others can move out of the way. Okay. And Ooh, and I'll be sterling. aggroing aggroing the okay. enemy at this point. You gotta make a con save though. Um yep. Oh, so that space is still full of. Oh, okay. Yeah, for I didn't minutes. realize that. Okay, so then I'll go with my plan B because would I would I know uh, and that this space would be dangerous to me from what I just saw. I mean, it's it all got lit up in a sphere. Yeah, like you see this green. All of them are green and glow. There's this effect that's in there. Give me an Arcana okay. check, and I'll tell you if you know or not. All right, I do have advantage on those right now. Sorry, but that skunk was rooms. within like three feet of me, and I'm just gonna let it leave. <laughs> that's a that's a ten. Speaking of auras, <laughs> my Arcana check is is a ten. A ten? With you advantage? saw a, 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 a spell out there, and you see that there's a lingering effect. I'll say. All right. You don't know what in that, that case, effect does, but in that case, I I won't enter that room if I okay. if I don't think it's safe. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to attack the doll that's in front of me. Okay. And go from there. All right. Okay. So that's a 12 to hit and that is a miss. A 14 to hit. 14 also misses. Oh, man. All right. That's This is cool. That's All you. Right. Get behind me. Yeah. Noggins, you're up. Travas, you're on deck. You're still in front of me, correct? Uh, there is two dolls in front of you and the rest that are in the room that no longer have anybody else to attack except you uh, and Great. two dolls behind you fighting Spike. Okay. Um, I need more AOE things. Uh, okay. 
then but I I have help on the next attack I take. Yes. Uh, does it have to be a melee? I guess it's, this is just attack. That's just attack. It's just attack. Thank you. Yeah. Cool beans. Uh, then yeah, I will try to burn one of these things again because I don't want to waste that help. Okay. Um. So let's do that. Roll. Why am I still using digital dice? Uh, twenty-five to hit. That's a hit. Great. That's going to be gross damage. Only four points of fire damage. Okay. Um, bonus action. Who can I see that looks hurt? Um, who is hurt around you? Either Sterling or Travas. Are you guys hurt? Yes. Uh, I'm no. down eight. I'm at the back of the hall now. Sorry. I'm, I'm still at full. Yeah, so okay. Travas is hurt clearly behind you. He'll survive. Uh, then as a, uh, <laughs> an action for my, uh, my, my spike, Spike's going to attack uh, very angrily. Uh, that's a 14 plus a lot to hit. Um, yeah, that's, um, yeah, that's a 19 to hit. Um, that's going to be, uh, ooh, 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 11, 14, 17 points of piercing. Ooh, very nice. Ish. That was um, pretty bad. It looks bad. Okay. Then, just because he, he, he's by himself with these things, um, he's going to literally teleport right behind it. Yep. And just uh, get <laughs> as a five foot cube of uh, magical darkness appears. Okay. Around around uh, it, around yep. the creature. Okay. Mm. So that's that's the turn. Okay. So that creature is currently in darkness. All right. Yep. Uh, mm. Travas, you're up. Yeah, uh, Josh is going to take um, two bags of ball bearings okay. and throw them down that hallway. Okay. Uh, towards the guard. Okay. And try to move as much as I can the other way down the hall. Towards the hall. Okay, so you will... No, uh, yeah, so I roll the roll the bearings towards okay. the hall. Yep. Out of the door. Yep. Down the, towards the hall. Yeah. And then move backwards. Okay, do you want to go through the door? The into the room? Yeah, if I can, yeah. It gets you to the window beside Falfer. And I'm doing it with the same actions that, that Muriel is doing. Like, get in, get yeah. in. Okay. All right. All of the dolls converge on Noggins and Sterling. Uh, at the beginning of that, that doll and the, the guard, at the beginning of their turns, they take another D4. Okay. On each turn, as long as that fire's point. The guard takes four. Or you uh, you want to roll it, or I want... Well, I rolled it. I rolled it. No, you can. So, you can. Yep. Doll takes three, guard takes four. Another wisdom save. That is also a failure. Okay. Um. Here we go. So, we have... Okay, so we have four attacks against Noggins. Yep. Not enough, not enough, not enough, not enough. Wow. All right then. Uh, one against, I'll say two against Sterling. Not enough. Uh, 20 doesn't do it, right? Nope. Okay. Wow, they're just shooting blanks. Um, that's it. And then we have uh, the one attacking. Uh, it's through darkness, so they get disadvantage, obviously, on that if they're yep. in darkness. Yep. Okay. They, can they move out of the darkness? Or does I mean, it follow it's, them? It's uh, on the turn they want to move out. It's just a five foot cube. Yeah, okay. So they're going to. We did it move, on them. But they still. They, yeah, they move out of it. Oh, actually, they can't move out of it. They're pinned. So, yeah, they got disadvantage. They missed. That's fine. Okay. Um. It is now the guard's turn. The guard um, now does not have that marionette or the the uh, 
doll on its face anymore. They both, the one guard tries to talk the other guard and tell him that friends are down that hallway. So we're gonna do a little persuasion check here. Um, it passes. So the guards are currently holding on the other side of the fire. Um, Muriel, you're up. Falfer, you're on deck. Can I move? Can I do the same thing? Can I move forward, stab it all, move back again? Or uh, is you're there... not in a place. And now that Sterling is big, Sterling is actually taking up a ten foot space. Uh, you could actually, yeah, you could. I would allow it. Okay, then I will continue to rapier to okay, so doll five, face. 10, 15, 20 puts you to attack. Okay, yeah, I got thirty feet of movement, so and I'll move 30 up. Will put, uh, bring you back right behind Sterling. Perfect. Uh, twenty six to hit. That's a hit. That's uh, gonna be a seven for the rapier and 14 for the sneak attack. Is that one still alive? Dead. Good. Okay, then I will move back and um, uh, I guess, I guess, uh, yeah, noggins again, I'm gonna give help to I'm definitely gonna give Noggin's help. I'm just trying to figure out, um, do I have to specify if I'm giving help to an attack or to an ability check? Does it say you have to specify that? It's just that I can use the help action as a bonus action. Um, no, just so I don't see help think action so, aid an ally and attacking creature. Okay, so I'm gonna give you the help action It'll either be on your next attack or uh, if you want to use that, because mm -hmm. I'm thinking we might be trying to all yeah. Yeah. get out of here. So, right. yep. Uh, and then I, yeah, I'll move back 10 and okay. continue to be like, right. yeah. so you're right behind Big Sterling. Okay. Falfer, you're up. Esmeralda, you're on deck. <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to uh, look around at my options. And grab one of my crossbows. And can I see, like, peek out the door, Jay? Yeah. And look down the hall towards where the other dolls are, and attempt to to poke one in the eye with a long pointy thing no, from a distance. You, like it's, it's it's a distance, so you could actually shoot one of them. If you yep. dip dip out, you could shoot the one that's kind of on on Noggin's back. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay. So you want to step forward. Dip out beside Muriel, take a shot and come back. Yep. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, here we go. Okay, so that's a 19 to hit. That hits. And uh, three okay. damage. All right, you kind of take out its shoulder. Anything else? You want to move back to the window? Uh, yeah, I'm just moving back to the window and I yell out to everyone, we must go! Okay, uh, Esmeralda, you're up. Sterling, you're on deck. Well, I don't want to break that concentration of that spell. Um, Is there anything else nearby that I could probably sm slash with a sword? Not that you can... Uh, well, you can move up. Um... That one's a little far. Yeah, you can move up past Sterling, hit that one and come back. Yeah, I'll do that. Um, although then you're stuck back in the other room. You couldn't get back behind Muriel. You don't have enough movement to do that. Oh, then you maybe go five, 10, it's... 15, 20, and then you move 10, right? Oh no, I would allow you to dip into the, into the room that you came in through, if you want, okay. on a diagonal. Okay, and I'd be able to, to retreat after? Yeah. Okay, so then, uh, and you said there was one creature yeah. there, or one doll? So you can go okay, 5, so... 10, 15, 20 here. Okay. Attack, and then 5, 10 in, diagonally into the room. Perfect. Okay, so we'll do uh, the first attack to hit that creature's 24 to hit, or the doll's 24 hit. to hit. For eight points of damage. Yep. Uh, second attack is only 12 to hit. I don't Miss. think that hits. Yeah, and then on uh, short sword is an 18 to hit. That's a hit. Right, 
for 10 points of damage. Very good. This one's looking not good. And then as soon as you do that, you move backwards. It does get an attack of opportunity. Mm-hmm. It is going to miss. Okay. Um, all right. Sterling, you're up. Noggins, you're on deck. All right. So I've been doing some rolling because I'm going to use... Yeah, I saw that. Uh, That's good. <laughs> I'm going to use an action surge on this turn. Okay. So um, I had a nat 20 with yep. my first attack. And what I'm doing is I'm attacking the ones within the room. Okay. Uh, with my Vishnad crossbow. Okay. Uh, and the first two attacks are using acid arrows. Okay. Uh, which will leave a five foot pool of acid and it deals an extra 1d4 acid damage. I've already calculated that in. Okay. Um, so these are the acid bolts from uh, Camp Gakis nice. and uh, Nobody and uh, Nasil, uh, who are awesome. So uh, the damage on that one is 23. 23 damage. Yeah. To one of the ones in the room? To a single one? Yeah. To a single one in the room. And then it splashes uh, acid in five feet. Okay, so that um, one's dead for sure. Yeah. And then five feet. Okay. okay. Yeah. Which will hit uh, three 17, others. 17 to hit the, the next one. So, sorry, that was hit. just one one point of acid damage on, on that roll. Okay. Um, the second one, I'm using another acid arrow. Okay. Uh, it's a 17 to hit. Sorry, uh, I, so do those three within five feet take the one damage? I believe so. We because say yes. I, I'm pretty sure this is like using a vial of acid. Yep. But okay. it's just attached to a crossbow bolt. Okay. Okay. So the second one, I'm doing another uh, acid bolt. Okay. Um, that's five points regular piercing damage and then three points acid damage to anything within the radius. It goes down. Okay. Uh, and then a 25 to hit, seven points of piercing damage. And again, this is magical damage because it's the like Vishnad crossbow. Um, and then the last attack was a 10 to hit. So I think that's a miss. That's a miss. So there are only okay. two left in the room and two left outside Noggins with uh, the with Spike and Noggins. So, and I see they, well done. They've, they've all went back into the room we were originally in. A, a, a bunch of them have. Esmeralda, Falfer, and Travas are in that room. Okay. Uh, uh, Muriel's uh, right behind Sterling, and you can see where Sterling is. Can't miss him. Yep. Yeah. And then in front of me are two uh, of the things. One in front of you and two behind you that were fighting your fae. We're fighting gotcha. Spike. So three gotcha, around. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yep, 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 cool. Um, yeah, because I won't be able to get by Sterling. Not not big Sterling like this. So I'm just going to take the advantage. For movement, you uh, mean? Getting around Sterling, he's large right now, right? Yeah, but he's also, but he's also a companion. You can move through ally space. If they allow you, I'll allow it. Okay, then I will um, uh, take the help, I guess, to dis. I'm gonna use my action to disengage. Yep. Um, and then move 30? 35. 20. So 25 puts, or 20 puts you right in front of Felfer, who's in front of the window. Cool. Um, Okay, um, and as I'm going, I'll say, um, mm, Spike wants violence. But Spike <laughs> should be with me. Um, there's two on him. That's fine. He's going to attack one. Okay, attack one and then and then move. Okay. Um, uh, ooh, that's a crit. Okay. Um, that is an auto twelve plus. 18, 20, 23, 26 points of piercing and force damage. Okay. Um, it goes down. Oh, yeah. Great. <laughs> and then looks back and goes, ah, ah, and then follows me. Okay. Um, uh, it's going to take an attack he, of opportunity. Yeah, he will disengage. He'll take one of attack of opportunity. What's his armor class? Oh, uh, crap. It is, it is, it is, it is, it is. I'm always there. They need to have a separate thing. It's probably less than 20. Uh, it is le- yes, it's less than uh, one piercing, six necrotic. Okay, so that's okay. So seven so points a, so far, and then he so has 18. to take the charisma saving throw. Yep, yep, yep. Does he have? Uh, that's a fifteen on a die, so it's an eighteen. Yep. Okay, he's fine. Great. 
He has 40 feet of movement. How, how much can he move? He's 40 feet and he uh, he's small, so he gets skitters. Okay, so he's beside you, beside the bed in the room. He's he's gonna crawl on my on my shoulder. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh Travos, you're up. The skunk is so, so close. I can hear it moving through <laughs> leaves near me. This is gonna be a bad night. Uh I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, the, the rope I Travas had left the rope kind of coiled up inside the window. Yep. Can I look outside the window and see Perception check. if there's, yeah. I like how we finish each other's sandwiches. <laughs> uh, it's a 19. No sign of the guard. Yeah, outside. he he's gonna, ch I, I'm, I'm gonna check that rope out the window. And I'm going to go as far down that rope as you'll let me go. Okay, so you open the window. That's your action. You're going to climb out. You can move half speed. So I would say, yeah, actually, you can make it down to the ground if you're right beside the window, which you are. Yeah. So you are yep. out I will on the ground. That. Okay. Um, and when you when you touch the ground, you hear there's commotion. You hear you, you watch as people are starting to actually like gather. Um, cause smoke is starting to billow out that window that you, cause the hallway is starting to fill with smoke a little bit from that alchemist fire. Um, you hear shouts from the front of the building where you imagine the other guards are. Uh, that last doll is going to run at you, Sterling, and attack, oh, there's three dolls, sorry. Three dolls are gonna attack you, Sterling. Uh, they've left the room as Esmeralda, so they don't take their... Oh, but they started their turn there, right? So they have to take mm -hmm. con, con saves? All con saves, Two yeah. of them failed. How much damage do they take? Uh, let's see. Got to roll that again. Twenty-two. Twenty-two points? Yeah. Wow. Radiant they, damage. They did. <laughs> Uh, two of them are dead. Oh. Um, one of them takes the attack at Sterling. That is a natural 20 for 24. Uh, that's a hit. So that um, is... But I can use my reaction for a runic shield one yeah. last time. Okay. So it has to re-roll. And it misses the next one. You lucky butt. <laughs> lucky butt. Good night. Okay. There is one left in front of you, Sterling. All right. Uh, well, the good news is I rolled another nat 20. Uh, so hey. including my giant smite and everything, that's 19 damage to that one. Oh. How would you like and to finish off the last of the dolls? I would like to cleave it in twain. <laughs> like in, it. Twain. Uh, in, in twain! In twain, good It twains sir. all of the... I was going to say cleavage, but that's weird. It twains. It twains. <laughs> the cleaves twains. Twain mm. didn't uh, like it. All the Twain. All right. All the sh even Shania's Twain. Um, uh, wow. The Shania uh, Twain's stop too. Canadian. Just, Canadian. just Canadian. don't just say. Show your, In fact, when you do it, it goes. Bow, bow, yeah. bow, 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 bow. Oh, no. that was terrible. <laughs> okay. No, it didn't. Man, did I feel happen. like I'm two pieces now. <laughs> you feel None like of that. What? <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Um, we'll edit that out later. Yeah, it's <laughs> going out. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll, right. we'll fix that for you at home. Okay. Uh, all right. So you have done that. <laughs> you have movement left, Sterling. <laughs> all right. Uh, I'm gonna head into the room and be like, "They're dead now." I like it. <laughs> I'm gonna be like, "What?" We Amazing. still have guards, but the dolls are all dead now. So yeah, you kind of look into the room because it's a busy room right now. Um, mm. You could move past and head over here if you like. I'll, I'll just stay at the door. I okay, think, you're at I mean, the door. You're, so you'll be the last I'm one. I'm not going to push my way through. Okay, all right. Uh, Noggins, you're up. Travas, you're on deck. Well, I look around and say, are we leaving or are we continuing? The window's open. Travas is already out. <laughs> I'm asking the question oh. whether he left or not. <laughs> What's happening? Why are we leaving? Well, there's a fire. There were a lot of dolls and now the guards. Do we want to take care of the fire and the guards? Or do we want to just take what we got and run? I don't. I'd like to run. Did we get... Okay, if we got stuff and if, if 
but with that being said, I'm going to use that the rest of that to uh, how how tall is the building? You're good. If you, if you get to you have five feet because you have 35 feet of movement, right? 35. Yeah. So because you have five feet, you have the five feet to get to the window and then the 30 to get down. Yeah, I'm, I'll, so I'm just going to literally down. jump. We okay. you don't have to, but if you'd like to, I'm, I can I'm going have to. to. Athletics check, please. <laughs> yeah. Wait, acrobatics, or athletics? Or acrobatics. Whichever I'm like, you hold on. <laughs> um, uh, since I uh, no, Spike's gonna stay with me. Uh, that is, you know, it's fine. It's cool. I asked for it. Um, it's a nine. Wait, 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 wait. 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 Okay, never mind. You don't need to wait anymore. That's you take fine. five feet of damage. Five, five, feet, five, five, oh. damage, five hit points of damage. As you kind of okay. come down, you just misjudge your fall, trying to keep him safe. Take five points. I have mirthful leaps though, and they do nothing when I fall. Uh, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to do... Land on Travas. Do you actually not take damage from fall? No, I, am not a, I am not a monk. Oh. Uh, no, I guess I, I, I can jump better than most people as well. Got it. Uh, okay. Not this time. Okay. Not this time. Great. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, and now, I mean, that's that was just movement. If we're gonna if we're in turns, yeah. I'll use my action to keep moving. Okay. So, so yeah. where, which way do you want to go? Towards the front of the building? Towards the back of the building? We're on the side, right? Yep. I would assume Perception we check. came. Oh shit! Uh, shoot! 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 We, we get can one. Say that. It's okay. We're allowed. Um, this. We're PG thirteen. Great. Uh, that is a twenty-two. Uh, you hear there's a commotion at the front of the building. It sounds clear at the back. Cool. But you do see they, people yeah. starting to come out of their houses to find out what, what's going on. Valid, going to the back. Okay, you... Uh, let me find out, actually, how far you go. Um, you come up there. Back of the building is there. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Puts you three quarters down the side of Great. the building. Okay. Travas, you're up. You following Noggins? Uh, it's it's only noggins out at this point, yep. right? Um, I'm going to uh, foof. Oh, question is, are you stealthy noggins? Or are you just running? <sighs> There's noise. Probably and should stealth. Yeah, and pass is gone, so we can't pass is that. very much gone because Spike's not leaving yet. Uh, yeah, I'll stealth. Okay. So it'd be half. Then you'll, you'll move half and give me a stealth check, please. Oh, I was lucky. Twenty-one. Nice. Travas. Um, am, am I able to, uh, I'm asking if I can hide in the shadows now and hold a dash action for when Falfer yep. gets down? Sure can. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to hide. Oh, hide is an action. Sorry. So not hot. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe we're arguing over, over words here. <laughs> Just I'd like by to the be, ones you said. <laughs> I'd like to be obscured by the shadows. Okay. Uh, to the best of my ability. Okay. Uh, until Falfer comes down, and then I would like to use my dash to follow him wherever he goes. Okay. Give me a stealth check, and then I'll apply it to your dash. All right. It is a 10. Okay. Thank you. Uh, back to the top. Uh, you hear Travas and Noggin something say, I think they're around the side. Coming from oh. the front of the building. Okay. Oh. Muriel, you're up. Fell for your own deck. Um, is, is Esmeralda near me? Uh, she is, yes. Right, right near you. You are just outside the room here. Big stone okay. covers your, your area. And then this is Esmeralda. So you're just diagonal through the door, out, outside of the door of the room. I'm going to quickly turn to her. Were you able to read what was in that book? Yeah, I still have it. it can I take it? I'm going to try to get all this to Erwin. I'm assuming we're fleeing. Yeah, of course, here. Okay. I'll take it, stash it, and then I'm going to do you're all out. the things. Yep. So to get out of here. Uh, so I will uh, bonus action dash. So yes, um, you have, you get down with about 20 feet of movement left um, with your bonus action dash. Okay. Do I hear the 
the noise of where it's clear hey, now. I heard... they're at the front okay. um can i move so i see noggins kind of heading towards the back yeah. and the they're heading the guards are seeming to come from the front yeah can i head straight away from the building so that the guards will see me yeah you can absolutely do that Okay, so I'm gonna. Uh, so you'll go, you'll go twenty. Sorry, yeah, you'll go twenty for your bonus action dash, and then you have another twenty feet of movement if you want to use that as your action. Uh, yeah, I'll turn 30. to. Yeah, I, I want to do all movement, but yeah. I'll turn to because Travas is down at the bottom of the rope. Yeah, so you take I, off. Okay. Well, and, bef- just before I go, I'm gonna yeah. turn to him and I'm gonna say. I'll lead them away. Get out of here. And then I'm going to book it. Okay. So you book 10. You go another 30. You're 50 feet away from the building. Yeah. But I'm intentionally doing it in a way in where the guards will okay, see me. So you start to, hey. Uh, give me- um, less hey. Less obvious and more okay. like. Just running. Um, I've done a really bad job of sneaking away from this building. <laughs> okay. Got it. Got it. Okay. All right. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Falfer, you're up. Esmeralda, you're on deck. Yeah, so I'm just going to follow down through the window and try to try to get away. Okay. Uh, again, you go. Y- you move now. You move thirty. No. You, yep. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. No. Did. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So 30. you get down to the bottom of the of the thing with your move. Would you like to move with your action? And are you stealthing? I am. Um. I'm just going to move with in the direction that noggins was moving if i can still yep. perceive where he went yep okay yeah uh, so i'm just gonna basically chase him and i don't know so if i stealth it's an action but wasn't my action just climbing out of the window Your stealth is an action hiding is an action oh sorry okay so i will stealth then okay give me a stealth check um, that's a uh, 22. Okay. All right. So you, you move 30 feet down the building towards the back of the building, which puts you just like cool. 15 feet from the edge of the building. Okay. Okay. Esmeralda, Great. you're up. Sterling, you're on deck. All right. I too shall GTFO and stealth down that okay. rope. Same thing. Um, but you find yourself, um, five feet from the ground with only your movement. So in order to get down off the rope and move, you'll have to dash. Okay. Okay. Stealthing I'm just gonna or clap. running? Uh, stealthing. Okay, give me a stealth check. Oh no, <laughs> I got a 10. <laughs> okay, all right. Good to know. I'm just like, ah, rope burn. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so you move down, and you're where Falfer was, more or less, just behind Falfer. You watch him kind of sneaking, and you're all sneaking kind of along the building down to the back. Sterling, you step into the room. I'm assuming you're going to continue, but you realize that you are too big to fit through this window. Yeah, and that leads to my next question. Is it lasts for <laughs> a minute, but it doesn't say that I can dismiss that as... You know, uh, so I don't know if I just assume that I'm able to dismiss it, or if it just lasts for a minute and I'm stuck. Let's it. let's let's look into it. But I'm going to say that if it's an effect that you can create, it's also an effect that you can dismiss. All right, so I dismiss it, and then let's so let's that look I'd that be able to fit fit back through the window. Um, okay. And Whoop. I guess I'll stealth because everybody else is stealthing. Yep. You get to the bottom, um, but you only make it halfway down the wall or so with your movement. I have I have 40 feet, is that? That would make a difference. You're good to go. Okay, okay. all right. All right, so I'm gonna, and just give me a stealth check, actually. Uh, with my disadvantage, it's 18. 18, very good. Uh, and Jay, I was gonna say, because I heard Esmeralda, yeah. um, I would look at Spike on my shoulder and go, sorry, buddy, I'll call you back next time, in Sylvan, okay. and it's fine, and it, Pops away as I recast Path Without a Trace. Okay. Path mm. Without a Trace. All right. Because it sounds like we need it. <coughs> okay. So yes, as you sir. do, all of you feel, again, the ground, the leaves around you start to kind of raise a little bit. Everything is lighter where you step. Um, and as you kind of run back, you all clear the back of the building and into the garden area where you're able to kind of stop for a second. You crouch. 
take a breath, and then you watch as Muriel continues to run, and one of the guards go, hey, and they break from the building, and a couple of them start to chase, make chase behind her. Um, but it looks like she has some distance. You're not sure if they're going to catch up, but at least it seems like she's managed to distract them from where you are. And I will use my movement, my action to move, and my bonus action, my bonus action dash to, now that I know they're following me, to get as far away and like duck down an alley and hide. Okay. And then keep stealthing away. All right. Uh, give me a stealth check on that. Okay. Once you get to that point. Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's a natural uh, one for 11. Oh. <laughs> All right. I'm supposed to be super stealthy. We will find out what happens <laughs> in the future. Uh, the rest of you hunker down kind of in that garden until things kind of calm down a little bit. I'll give you a minute to talk amongst yourselves if anything it needs to be said. Um, Noggin just turns around. <sighs> um, did, did we get information I, I i was in the hallway and then we got uh, attacked by dolls and now we're gone i feel like we kind of did that for nothing no i i got a it looked like isaac's journal which i i gave to muriel but uh and i will relay the info that was in that um uh, what you had said earlier okay can you give me a um history check please mm-hmm Five. Hmm. Mm. Can you roll a d4 for me, please? Okay. Two. You remember the first two things that were in that journal. Okay. You do not remember the others. So you can relay that to them now. I, I put it in the casting crew chat. I don't know if you saw that. I mentioned that, but... Oh, I thought you put it in the... I tried uh, to po po paste it. It wouldn't let me. Zoom chat. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll read the two. So this is the information okay. that Esmeralda shares with you. There uh, has yet been no sign of the butler, lady in waiting, and he fears the worst. Um, he has seen a group of four individuals entering the Vokter house through the cellar almost on a nightly basis. Some leave after, or some leave later in the evening, but others don't leave until the morning. Now, if there's any other information that you remember of your own volition, Nora, you can try and share that. I do remember that the uh, maids would go to the market every morning. Um, so we could try to seek them out and question them there. Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure it's conclusive evidence. Doesn't really sound like anything is um, tying um, um, Lady Victor, Vok, Vok, Vokter, to um, Strahd. But they could know something we don't. And there's the a cellar? cellar or something? Yeah. Should we investigate the cellar? I think we should. We're here. Is it here or is it? It's at the Vokter house. Oh, the Vokter house, yeah. Isn't that where lady, the lady sleeps? That is her home. Oh, sorry. I thought it was this building. No. Um, I'll be honest. I think, I think this kind of got out of hand. Yeah. And that scares me. You're new here. We kind of, this is pretty much our MO. <laughs> well, didn't last time something get out of hand, somebody <laughs> die, and I'd rather not die. I know this Nothing is a dream and all, but it's still a dream, and you can die in dreams. We never said this was a cakewalk. Well, yeah, I didn't, I'm not implying that it's easy, but dolls... And then whatever else happened, I don't, I don't, I don't, I didn't see the fire happen. That happened. I don't know. Sure. 
so gone wrong. We make plans and they fall apart. There's no winning here in Barovia. So what do we do? Back to the Blue Water Inn? Do we go to the Vokter house? Do we continue here? I, I've explained it a lot and we didn't even do much. So I would rather not go straight there and not be prepared for that. Maybe we rest for tonight then. All right. But we can't go on expecting all of our plans to just go the way we expect them to. That's just life here. I understand. To be that way. I just had hope when it started off well. Agreed. Well, here we are. Blue water in. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Noggins is very quiet and he just starts to walk. You guys head off towards the blue water in. Um, at this point, can I get everyone to take your earphones out, please? Actually, back in for a sec. That's right, everyone but Dave and Joel. Ah. It's better that way. As you guys head back to the Blue Water Inn, you get back, you start to settle in. It takes you some time to kind of get there. You both stop just outside of the Blue Water Inn. You look at each other exchange a glance as you hear or you feel in your pack a commotion movement as you reach into your pack silencing the doll inside and that is where we're going to end the session for this evening <laughs> thank you everyone for watching uh it has been a fun night uh, it has been great. Lauren, thank you so much for joining us. It has Bravo. been such Bravo. a pleasure Bravo. having you. The timing Thanks was for perfect. Having me. Made a great grand e exit. Um, it's been awesome. Um, we'd love to have you back at some point and, and uh, have Muriel make another appearance. It's been really, really wonderful. So thank you so much. Um, thank you for having me. It's been super fun playing with all of you. And yeah, hopefully Muriel gets out of this. We'll see. <laughs> we will see. Tune in later. Um, this Thursday, um, we will have Lauren on uh, Aftermath. We'll have a lot of fun talking about Ram Smith and what she does and, and all the fun stuff uh, that she's involved in. That'll be great. And then, of course, on Monday, we have episode five of uh, Into the Mist. If you liked what you saw tonight, consider subscribing, following on uh, uh, Twitch, and uh, hit that bell icon on YouTube to get notified. Uh, check out our Discord and all of that fun stuff. We love you guys. Take care of each other. Love each other. And we will see you on Thursday. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye.